I would like to call the budget hearing meeting to order at 7 35 35 in the village chamber located at 2350 South 25th Avenue Mr. Clark can we get a roll call please yes you can madam president trustee Ely present trustee Tierney present trustee Jones is absent Mayor Thompson here trustee Horn here trustee Abraham is absent trustee Brown Marino May we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mayor, you have a quorum. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we all please have a moment of silence. Okay, Madam President, item two on the agenda is public comments. Let me just first remind the audience and uh, board members, if you have cell phones at this time, please silence them for the meeting. Public comments. The Village of Broadview encourages citizen input. Those wishing to address the Village Board under public comments must fill out the attached speaker request form and submit it to the Village Clerk prior to the start of the board meeting. The President will then call your name at the appropriate time. When addressing the Village Board, please limit your remarks to three minutes. When the President recognizes you, please state your name and address for the record and speak loudly. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Please let the re record reflect at 737. Trustee Jones has arrived. Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Dempsey. Princess Dempsey, is the mic on? 2329. Uh, I was talk. I was looking at the budget that. 2329. South 29, South 14. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I was looking at the budget, the Broadview budget hearing. Uh, I noticed on 2008, uh, the mayor's salary was at 55, and it has been, according to the projected budget, it's going to be raised at 58,000. I noticed also that the trustee budget is still the same, and so is the village clerk. That has not been raised. The deputy clerk also salary is the same. I also know in the seminar that the mayor's salary or the, bu the budget for 2019 says 6,000, but the trustee seminar is lowered. They used to be 60,000, now it's 2,500. And I was wondering why is that being lowered considering that the trustee, this is a trustee ran village. Also, the travel expense for 2008, there was none. This year is 1,500. Office expense have increased from 2,000 to 8,500. The board and, and commissioners of police and fire are now being paid for 2009, as well as the zoning and planning and legal bills. I also noticed the discrepancy that um, we currently, our building commissioner currently makes 93,600. He's been raised to 96,000. Uh, 875, but then his administration, administrative clerk, it says she's making 59,283,000. dollars she's being lowered to 45,260. I feel that that is a $14,000 difference. Office expenses have uh, increased. Then I noticed that uh, we love my fire chief. She's making 116, raised to 124, but the police chief salary has not moved. It is still the same, so I have some concerns in that. I also was looking at it's going to be, right after this, a special board meeting to pass the budget. So if this is just an itinerary budget it, and it changed in the newspaper, you're supposed to post it for 30 days, board. If, the change, this is a, if this is a change, it was not posted. I did not see the post of the 30 days. But those are my concerns uh, as a resident. And like I said, if it's going to be a hearing, the residents do not have time for you to answer these. And is it going to be a change? Or are we going to redo the budget? Or, I mean, are you going to amend the budget? I don't know. That is my question. Thank you. Ms. Redmond? Yes. Uh, Shirley Redmond, 2246 South 24th Avenue. Um, my question, you know, I've attended the finance meeting in March, and I did get a budget from the window when it was announced, uh, the first draft that was handed out, I believe, at one meeting. And then I'm hearing that it's an amended budget. And so what I'm hoping that you could answer for me, because this is important for me to understand in the presentation, okay? You know, we talked about increased salaries. We talked about, you know, I heard through the meetings, you wanna hire a part-time cashier. We're gonna hire increased numbers for uh, public works. Uh, we have the 911 renovation going on and, so, and the streetscape that's ongoing. We had parking meetings uh, about the park overnight parking and we have to pay for those stripes. It's, it goes there and whatever else. We've talked about the enterprise zone and monies 
accommodated for that. And then we also said that we needed $2 million for the Braga Drive project, even though I know we're not going to start the, the basic work, most of the work until 2020. What I want to understand as a resident is how is this, what's in the budget to cover this? Because I haven't had a chance to look at whatever the amended budget. And the one that I got from the window was just a general fund budget. In past years, Mayor Thompson, and I want this to go on the record, we've been able to get whatever was in the garbage fund, whatever the budget for all of the funds, not just the general fund. So I'm hoping that in the future to the clerk that that's given to the residents when we request that. Thank, Thank you. Ms. Revenue. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? So, go ahead. So, 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 uh, Ms. Smiths, just so we're clear, the clerk at the beginning said that if anybody had any public comments for the special meeting that's next, that would be that would give you the opportunity to get your questions answered. So, if you still would like to fill out a request to get your question answers during the budget process as we go through this process, then you can jot down your questions and get them answered in the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Director Hicks. Don't come down here. So I can see. First off, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, I know this process seems like it's uh, been uh, not as robust as, as we had planned, but um, this is a, a, a collaborative budget that all the departments who will have accountability for how the funds will be spent have put, have, have put long hours, and this is their budget. This is the fire budget. This is the police budget. This is the public works, and this is buildings budget. So um, what, what you'll see tonight is that every department will go through their accomplishments, because what we want to do, we want to applaud our department heads to make sure that the residents know what they've, what they've done. And then we want to go into their, um, their goals for the next fiscal year. And then what we have is a, a summarized uh, by category for every department for the, the past, the actuals for 25, fiscal year uh, 2015, 16, and 17. And then we'll show the budget for 2018, and then we'll show the proposed budget. And what you'll see is that uh, the majority of the cost for each department is in uh, their personnel cost. And so it leaves very little um, for that, that we really have to fine tune with, with every department to make sure that we adequately fund the department to be able to uh, provide the goods and services that the residents have come to know and, uh, and then to expand some of the services. Um, so we'll start with the executive department. Thank you, Director Hicks. Test one, two, test. Thank you. So, so for fiscal year 18, the achievements that we uh, saw were we appointed, I appointed Chief Euglin as our police chief. We appointed a finance director, Timothy Hicks, who has a CPA. We completed the 2016-2017 audit, as well as the 2017-2018 budget was approved last year in July. Uh, we've saved the village approximately 30000 on risk management insurance, brought on board a collection agency for outstanding debts due to the village. So earlier, I believe maybe August or something like that, we said that we had $1.6 million of uncollected debt that we had. 
So, so far through this agency, we've collected over $40,000 communication implementation. So we become very transparent as it relates to the services that we provide to the village. So being transparent means having a functional website, having uh, quarterly newspaper, uh, newsletters, and having live streaming on our village means that actually this meeting is being streamed live tonight. And we've remodeled the police department kitchen and upgraded the administration department so that we can have a more professional environment in the administration side when we bring in developers to come to seek to do business in the village of Broadview. This year the goals are for the administration uh, department is to maintain fiscal responsibility. So like Director Hicks said, this is not my budget, this is not the trustees budget, this is all of our budget. It's the residents budget, it's the business budget, it's all of our budget. So when we looked at that, what that process looked like for me was we put a timeline together. And the timeline consisted of the budget going to each respective department, and they gave their wish list. And that wish list consisted of whatever they wish was to happen, not saying that that's going to come to be, but we need to give them the, the opportunity to bring new ideas to the village on things that we can afford. And then we work our way backwards to cut in certain areas if we needed to do so. So they met with each department head individually. When they met with the department heads individually, the budget officer and the director then came to me and we had a discussion as it relates to the budget. Once that decision, once that discussion took place, we had a, a department head meeting as it relates to the finance department. And what that consists of, we sat in the room for multiple hours until we got to a balanced budget. And so it was input from the building department, public works, from the fire, the police, and from the administration side, and the clerk had input as well. Uh, this year we plan on hosting a state of address for the village of Broadview so what that looks like is as we look at this budget that we looking to pass we looking to do a state of address so that you all know what we're doing economically what are we doing to bring new businesses to the village how does that look when we have our stakeholders our schools our park district and our library um, this year we will be creating a healthy lifestyle initiative and that will be a village-wide initiative so actually director Davis and I have been working the past couple of weeks to kick off this big health initiative and I believe if we have a healthy village and a healthy workplace we can do more and be more viable and more and then we're able to sustain in certain areas um, implement and create economic development on the Roosevelt corridor so we have quite a few vacant properties and quite a few vacant lots that's on the Roosevelt Corridor. So we've been having multiple conversations with developers, working with the, de the building department on what that would look like for the village of Broadview. Uh, continue to work with the state elected officials, professional developers, and community to implement the Broadview Senior Housing Project. So many years ago, the former mayor had brought in the Senior Housing Project and so we've made some decisions to go ahead so that we can move forward with that initiative because that's what the community wanted when the former mayor introduced it to the community. So that's one of our priorities to get that ball rolling and start moving forward to get the project up and going. Um, this year, the administration team will be assisting the public's work director with uh, initiatives related to street sidewalks and alleys and that's working under the chairperson, uh, Trustee Horn. Uh, we also will be working with the Public Work Director implement, implementing the uh, water meter system. So we've had some exploration as it relates to these water meters and working with Trustee Abraham as she sits on the water agency uh, board with me. We've been collaborating on what that would look like village-wide as, you know, what do we need to do to bring that system to be more efficient and, um, and go, I don't want to say wireless, but have a wireless where we don't have to go to each house like we do now. So. It, is, trans is um, seamless. Um, assist the building commissioner to create and implement TIF 6B 7C program. So what does that look like for the village of Broadview? So currently we have no, absolutely no programs in place as it relates to development projects. And typically what happens when you look at a 6B or a 7C or an anything that's in a TIF district, typically you would have a program so that you don't have to guess on how much you give a respective developer to do business. So we should always have a program in place that they qualify for for this funding instead of just saying we're going to give ABC company XYZ amount of dollars when it should be a program that they qualify for so that we can maximize our tax dollars in that. So we create those programs so we're looking to launch that. I know Commissioner Upshaw has been 
um, a couple of seminars. He's been connecting with the governor's office, working with Ida on how we bring those programs to Broadview and so we can launch those and be more effective. Uh, enhance the Broadview Chamber of Commerce. That's a big one for us. So we did a couple of business meetings in the village as it relates to our local business partners. And one thing that we were lacking is the support of a chamber. And we need to support our chamber so that we can do more. The businesses, they bring a whole different vibe, a whole different type of network into the village of Broadview and because we have these lucrative businesses that want to continue their business relationship in the village of Broadview. We need to support the Broadview Chamber. So um, the clerk and I have been working very hard to network, going to different chamber meetings. Actually, this morning we had a meeting at 7.30 with the Elmhurst Chamber of Commerce. So it's just building those relationships on how they can help us develop a chamber. We are part of the Proviso Chamber of Commerce, and that consists of Bellwood, Maywood, and now Broadview, and I think Melrose Park. Um, established stronger partnership with the Broadview Park District and the Public Library on community events. So like I said, Director Davis and myself, we've been working um, very hard to bring community events because it shouldn't just be one taxing body responsibility to kick off a big event because it's a cost that come with that event. If we can share the cost, then we're saving money in doing that and all of our tax dollars go to these taxing bodies. Working with the public library, we're working with Director Hester and her new project as we develop the new um, public library and how we can be more efficient to support that system. Uh, working with the local schools, uh, we're going to be more engaged in our local schools. I know we've visited Lindop a couple of times with Career Day. Um, the first graders had a function. I know over at Roosevelt School, we've been very active with them and some of the initiatives that that school district is hosting as well as Comaric. So we just want to be more engaging with our schools and promote reading and volunteering because once the young people that's in middle school getting ready to go to, eight, go to high school, we need to put them in a position where they can go somewhere to volunteer so that they, they can either enhance their resume or enhance their skill set. And we as a village should be receptive of that. And we should be promoting volunteerism through our local businesses to give those people and those kids an opportunity to do more. Um, the final thing for the 2019 goal is to create an internship program for Broadview students in college in college study in marketing, public administration, law, accounting, and mass communication. We have several young people that's in college that's looking for internships, but we absolutely have no program that can support them. We should be in position to be able to support our local residents in internships. We are a municipality and we cover each one of these disciplinaries. Um, if it's a cost this year, we're looking to do internships at no cost, but as we create revenue and generate funding, maybe we can provide the young people with a stipend so that we can offset some of their costs as it relates. They may want to need to buy books or computers or what have you. But as we look at the fiscal year for 2019, we're looking to maintain and to sustain. Each department, when we went through this budget, um, and I heard the comments, and that's why I was so excited about this presentation because all of your questions are literally going to get answered in this presentation from the department heads and from this from my point of view but if we all work together collectively although we see um, if you look if you do the comparison from 2015 2016 2017 2018 and 2019 the personnel costs we reduced by the 17.2 percent whereas last year was 18.5 percent Employee benefits for the proposed budget is 2.7% and the budget last year was 3.3%. Uh, contractual services 78.6% and the budget last year was 76.7%. And the reason that um, contractual services went up because we decided to take legal out of the respective line item from the departments and move it into executive because we can kind of manage uh, when we have different things going on as it re relates to legislative or if it's a personnel matter, we can kind of control where that funding go instead of having it in that respect of budget. When we looked at it this year, it got um, not out of control, but it was hard for us to manage and it's easier for us to manage. So we have the accounting team looking at the, bu the bills that come from the legal firms on what line item goes to what area. Um, commodity, commodities that went up a little bit, about 1%. We don't have any capital outlines in contingency. We removed that line item. So, um, Director Hicks. Yes. 
Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. The Office of the Village Clerk records proceedings of all village board meetings, including special meetings, maintains all the official records of the village board, including minutes and ordinances, is also the keeper of the village seal, and monitors village compliance with the Open Meetings Act and Freedom of Information Act. The village clerk's office also serves as the local election authority and registrar for voters. Um, when I was elected last year and we took seat in the office, it was in shambles. And I've spoken about this at prior meetings and uh, we've had a lot of things to overcome and the main three things last year was educate, organize, and catch up. Some of the achievements that we've accomplished last year, um, we created a log for tracking FOIA requests properly. Uh, we received, tracked, and completed all FOIA requests to date. Um, reviewed, indexed, and codified ordinances from 2013 to current. So when we looked at the codification and the uh, Sterling codifiers, which we keep it on online, uh, we had ordinances that were outdated because nothing had been codified since the year 2013. We have since gone through everything. We had to rebuild the year 2016 because that office had no records of meeting minutes, agendas, legislation, or codified ordinances. So we have rebuilt that with the assistance of um, some of the other departments, uh, attorneys, and we've got everything on record now and codified up to date. In fact, this um, yesterday morning, uh, from the last meeting we had on Monday, I was able to um, scan in, index, and codify everything from the prior meeting. So we are up to date as of current. Um, we have successfully completed the training as the deputy registrar. I'm gonna have my deputy clerk go through that same training. Uh, one of the goals that we'll talk about later is actual uh, voter registration. Uh, both myself and my deputy clerk have successfully completed the Open Meetings Act training as well as the FOIA training. Um, I was named last year in one of the uh, meetings the official FOIA officer for the village of Broadview and um, I've been doing a lot of training with the new deputy clerk for the fire. She's up to speed and we're doing some amazing things in that office. Uh, the deputy clerk, again, is certified as the Open Meetings Act uh, backup as well as the FOIA uh, officer. So as far as goals for 2019, got a couple of them. In, in codifying the ordinances, what the codification team does is they provide us inserts to update our code book and I will be maintaining a book in my office and I'm going to make sure that the building department has his books as well uh, updated. Uh, we've had meetings about that. Uh, we're going to register 100 new voters in this coming fiscal year. That's the plan, that's the goal. Um, if we exceed that grade, if not, um, we would have done quite a bit more than we, what we have done in the past. I'm um, going to be attending clerk's training with the municipal clerk's office. Again, education is very important. I didn't realize when I stepped into this office how actually, how actually involved this clerk's office is, but um, I'm still learning things every day. I believe in education, and um, the mayor certainly is, is a proponent of education and training. Uh, we're gonna stay current on all of our FOIA requests. Uh, we've been pretty good. We've fallen off on a couple of them, but as of right now, we are current and don't plan on falling behind anymore. Uh, we're gonna, again, stay current on our codification process. Uh, we're gonna complete and release the 2017 minutes from the executive sessions now. Um, that was the latest project trustees that we've been working on. And in the near future, probably one of the next meeting or two, uh, we're gonna have an executive session and talk about the release of executive session minutes. And this is something that has not been done in the past. This is something that needs to be certified and released, and I'm working with our attorney teams on getting that completed. We're gonna work with the webmaster to add the addition of the clerk's tag. I've been working on this, but kind of put it on the back burner with other priorities taking place. But right now, um, you'll be seeing very shortly the clerk's tab services that we offer, um, other information that uh, has been missing off the website for so long. And lastly, we are gonna operate the clerk's office under budget. Thank you. Oh, okay, real quick, um, 
as you can see, $51,000 is the proposed budget. Uh, you'll see variances over the years for, uh, with actuals, and generally you'll see um, an uptick in the budget with regards to election years. This is not really something that we have to worry about now. We've got um, salary and contractual services. Those services basically are um, legal as well as the codification. So um, for $51,000, I think you get your best bang for the buck out of this department. It's only two of us, but we do a lot. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Building department. Building department is responsible for administering the village municipal and zoning codes to ensure the safety of our citizens, uh, to protect our public health, and to ensure orderly development uh, in our community. As you can see, uh, we have our org chart. Uh, I have one administrative assistant, one building inspector. Uh, we have a third party contractor, BNF Construction Services, that they do a majority of our inspections and plan reviews. And we uh, also uh, have three landscapers at this time. As we take a look at uh, 2018 versus 2019 in terms of staffing, the, the bottom number in terms of FTEs is going to stay the same. But if you look at landscapers, uh, the mayor has uh, recommended that we do an RFP or RFQ as it relates to landscapers. So we, uh, it is my intention to have one landscaping service who will service all of the municipal properties as well as uh, any abandoned homes uh, that we become aware of as we move forward into our next fiscal year. I want to just comment on the admin staff. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Uh, as it relates to the admin staff, in 2018 budget, we had one. I'm looking to increase the admin staff to two. Uh, the mayor's charged me to uh, work on several economic development initiatives. And so that admin, the second admin staff will be working with me in terms of economic development and working on our GovQA software, which will allow us, the building department, to work more efficiently and effectively. 2018 fiscal year achievements. When I started uh, working in the building department back in 2009, I, I did not understand why the building department uh, expenses were so high and the revenues were so low. Uh, after further research and due diligence, we started looking at building codes, we started looking at inspections, we started looking at code violations and things of that nature. And I'm glad to say that as of 2000, fiscal year 2018, uh, we've gone from a cost center to a profit center, and uh, that has helped. We, I think initially, uh, back in 2008, 2009, we were, the building department, I think I anticipated, I think it was 1% of the general fund revenue, and I think we're a little more than three right now. Uh, we completed employee training. Uh, it's very important for employee development. Um, I attended, along with uh, our building inspector, Greg Buchanan, the 2015 International uh, building code, and I'll talk about that in greater detail in a few minutes. Uh, Linda, we had MOSIS training. Uh, one program that I was unaware that the village had been paying for, but we had not taken advantage of is the employee assistance program. I didn't even know what they offered until we met and had a meeting uh, with our village administrator, Ms. Letisa Jones. She set that up, and we found out that the, EA, the employee assistance, they offer quite a bit from counseling to financing to assisting on home purchasing and any uh, family issues that you may have. Uh, also, we had sexual harassment training. Uh, that's at the forefront right now with all that's going on in this world. Uh, it was something that the mayor thought was important, and I do too. And so we all have been trained as it relates to har harassment training. Develop new ordinances. Uh, in Broadview in the last two years, uh, they started making movies in Broadview, which I, I, I thought was very interesting. Uh, one has been at the uh, hotel that's located on Roosevelt Road at the motel, and the other one has been at the bank over in the Broadview Village Square. 
Uh, and my understanding is that they will be making another movie somewhere in the mall coming up this spring. Uh, we, we're in initial talks uh, just to find out what the movie is about and what they're thinking about, but a decision hasn't been made by the film crew as of yet, but they are considering Broadview. Uh, video gaming is at the forefront. Uh, the, everybody wants a machine in, in their facility so, uh, or in their business, so I thought it was very important that we come up with an ordinance to address the video gaming in our community uh, so, it doesn't, so it's not rampant and there's a process in place to apply for a video gaming license. Um, the first thing is you have to have a liquor license by the village or the municipality, which would be the village of Broadview, and then they have to submit the information to the state. Food trucks, very popular on the east and west coasts. Now they're in the Midwest. Uh, so I thought it was very apropos to create an ordinance for food trucks. After years and years of breakdowns, uh, we were blessed with uh, two brand new vehicles. Uh, so we have two uh, 2017 uh, Ford Escapes, which uh, are vill village municipal vehicles that have been assigned to the building department at this time. Uh, village projects. Uh, we have completed the building department renovation uh, and the village hall. We have a new roof. Uh, we, are, we have a punch list, list item right now. I mentioned that in, in our uh, last board meeting. We have punch list items that we'll be going through and I anticipate the uh, completion of the, the roof uh, within 30 days. And there's some minor repairs that need to be done, uh, some sign-offs by our observers and engineers, as well as uh, I'm gonna take a look at it myself and then I will be able to report that that project has been completed and we'll be on to our next project. Guided businesses through plan review, zoning, and permitting process. I've heard from quite a few businesses that are currently in Broadview that uh, they think our process is very complicated. When they uh, refer to our building code, when they refer to uh, uh, reading our ordinances. And so it was an honor and a privilege to sit down with existing businesses to take them through the process. And once we went through the process, and once they asked all the questions that they, they wanted, they, under, they, they thought it was a very simple process. And so it's just, they have to understand the process, and each step is the same regardless of what project is. You do need to do a plan review. You may, have to, you may or may not have to go through the zoning process. That depends on our village code. And once the plan review uh, has been approved, uh, then you apply for permits. And some of the uh, businesses for the fiscal year 2018, uh, we have Gateway Marble and Granite. We have GC Laser Systems, Advanced Auto Parts, Angel Gilding, ASG Staffing. Those are just uh, some of the new businesses that have come to Broadview uh, during our fiscal year. Uh, current businesses that have done major renovations, uh, we all saw the Marquis, which is now the Broadview Family Restaurant. Aldi, Target is still in process. Parker Hannafin, Ashley Furniture, MB Financial, BMO Harris, Windy City Limousine and uh, River Oaks Properties. So uh, as it relates to future businesses coming to Broadview, uh, I've commented before in our uh, board meeting about Buddy Bear Car Wash, Chicago Tribune, Lou Malinati's, Ross Dress for Less. Uh, they all, their plan reviews have all been approved and they're in the permitting, they're going through the permitting process right now and I anticipate all of those businesses to come online in our upcoming 2018, 2019 fiscal year. Um, potential developers, when we talked, the mayor talked about economic development in Broadview. We have a huge opportunity in Broadview. Um, and it's my job, she has tasked me to create an economic development corridor in Broadview and to work with developers to fill up all of those vacant spaces. Um, quite a few developers are aware of Broadview, they think it's Maywood. But Broadview actually was part of Maywood, for those of you who don't know, it was annexed in 1914. So that's why it's kind of cut up when you look at the map. But uh, there's a huge potential here in Broadview. And, and it's my job to promote Broadview. It's everybody's job, actually. But specifically, it's my job when, it, when we're having conversation with developers to give them the positives, to, to tell, talk to them why they should come to Broadview. But also to be able to offer them a comprehensive uh, economic development package. 
or a program, and we don't have that right now, and I am in the process of putting something together uh, along with the mayor's office so we can move that forward. Fiscal year 2019, we want to update our village code and ordinances. Uh, in the last audit, uh, one of the auditors, auditors uh, uh, pretty much said that we needed to update our building codes. We have not updated our building codes because we're trying to get through our current project, which is the 911 Consolidated Center. If we updated our building codes uh, at this time, then we have to redo all the play plans and it would be a whole nother issue as it relates to uh, updating our, our village codes and ordinances to the 2015. So we will be doing that uh, in the next fiscal year, as soon as we get the 911 Consolidated Center uh, completed and up and running. As the mayor mentioned about creating relationships, state, county, and local levels, um, I've had the honor and privilege to meet with a lot of state, local, and even some federal officials regarding funding for the Village of Broadview, uh, regarding senior housing, and, and what we want to do in Broadview, and what we want to bring, what type of development, and what resources are available to us. So right now, I am in the process of working with developers, working with the mayor's office, uh, working with our elected officials to talk about fundings, like the West Empowerment Zone, inter uh, Enterprise Zone and bringing that to our community, which will spur, help spur economic development. Uh, attending seminars pertaining to economic development uh, to help generate revenue. Well, uh, I've gone to the P3 conference where we uh, talked about federal funding. There's over almost a billion dollars in federal funding that's available. The question is, how do we get it? Uh, it's a long process. The funding is available. Uh, our current, the current uh, president and his administration, they want to help municipalities. It is a long process, but we have to start somewhere. And the first step for me is to getting the knowledge to meet the right people and to put the right policies and programs in place to assist us with funding on a state, on a local, state, county, and ultimately federal level. Increase economic development through TIF, 6B initiatives, and also uh, seven C's. Uh, my goal is to put together a comprehensive program for the village of Broadview as it relates to economic development. So when I sit down with those developers, we can talk about what we have to offer in this community in terms of tax incentives, in terms of any types of initi initiatives like the facade program. And they can ask, they can request, they can talk about what they're interested in, but be able to speak intelligently on TIFs, 6Bs, and 7Cs, and to be, offered, be able to offer them possibly some alternatives to assist in the growth of economic development in Broadview as well as revenue, and create sales tax. Implement the West Suburban Empowerment Zone. I spoke about that earlier. Uh, that's a collaboration with Bellwood, Maywood, Broadview, Cook County, Merrill's Park. And so we're, 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 right now we're in the process, we've selected a developer that we're gonna be working with uh, to assist us in submitting our application to the uh, state by the end of uh, this year. Sell village owned and abandoned property. We have quite a few properties that are vacant on the uh, in our Roosevelt Road corridor. Uh, there are a few that are owned by the village of Broadview, but most of them, uh, for those of you who don't know, they are on the tax list. Some of them are so far, far gone you know, three, four, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars, they're not going to be saved because the, 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 the taxes are greater than the, the worth of the property. So I am working with uh, uh, our legal team to, number one, uh, I've been tasked by the, mass, the mayor to purchase those properties and to get to, the, for the village to purchase those properties and to get them, uh, to sell those properties, to get them back on the tax roll, to get development to spur businesses and things of that nature. As it relates to our village-owned properties, um, again, we're not landlords, so we are going to be working dil diligently to sell our properties, too, that we have. And lastly, which everybody is aware of, is the completion of the 911 Consolidated Center and the renovation of the Village Hall. Uh, the priority is the 911 Consolidated Center, and then after that, we'll have several phases uh, to renovate the Village Hall.
if we take a, a snap, if we take a look at the 218, 219, 218 budget and 2019 proposal, uh, actually, what's about $500 or $300. So uh, our proposal, our expender, our budget is less. And uh, it is my goal and continued goal to uh, increase the revenues in our community and to reduce our debt. And we can do that uh, by economic development, which is going to create sales tax, property tax. We can do that by getting rid of vacant properties. We can do that by selling the existing properties that the village has. I understand the purpose of why those properties were purchased, and that was for to spur economic development. The problem was in 2008, 2009, the bottom fell out of the real estate industry. And we were stuck with those properties. So we will be moving forward. And again, our expenditures, our goal is to keep our expenditure, to keep reducing our expenditures and to be aware of the money that we're spending because it's your money, it's our money, and we are very conscious of that. It's so hard to follow the building department, but I'll try. <laughs> so the finance department uh, oversees and manages all of the financial operations of the village responsible for internal customer service to other village departments uh, to maintain the financial health of the organization in, in accordance with the annual budgets and the requirement of the municipal code. Uh, the finance department oversees accounting, audit, budget, debt issuance, purchasing, human resources, and payroll. Uh, so one of the, the, the first accomplishment for 2018 was hiring the village administrator. That is, the residents really have to understand how big of, a, of an accomplishment that is. Because we have an individual that takes ownership of everything that, it, that she's tasked with. And one of the things uh, that was lacking in the prior administration was human, uh, uh, HR as a function. And so dealing with all of the HR related issues, as you guys will see, personnel costs is the major cost of every department. So having someone that, that is taking ownership of that is huge. Um, so one of the things that she, the village administrator did was complete 90 day goals for all of the administrative staff. Um, having HR forms, having some form of documentation to go to um, and to apply across, uh, consistency across all uh, departments was huge. So that was a big accomplishment. Um, she became a member of the uh, Society for Human Resource Management. Um, <clears throat> we implemented the Smart Safe and Check Scanners. Um, that's going to be a huge um, benefit to the residents, um, and it creates su such efficiency and not having uh, village employees having to be escorted to the bank. Um, and being able to process checks and reduce the amount of NSFs because once you deposit those images, uh, the checks uh, clear a lot faster. Um, one of the things, uh, uh, having negotiated the union contracts, so uh, the, the contracts, I think they're three years, um, so that's a long time for to be without contracts for you know, our, our main employees, the police, fire, uh, the um, administrative, uh, the public works individuals. Uh, and what, what was huge, um, we, we use a lot of technology. In order to use the technology, we need to have the backbone, which is the server. And so updating the server, I know uh, Trustee Horn can uh, smile on that one. But getting the, the server updated uh, so that we can be able to live stream and be able to do a lot of things with the accounting software was huge. So the goals for 2019, um, promote a values-driven organizational culture that reinforce ethical behavior, exercise transparency, and maintains public trust. I think that's one of the biggest things that, um, that we want to establish is the, the public trust because we work for you guys. Uh, we want to implement financial policies and practices that promote accountability. This is one of them, being able to have a budget that every department 
uh, had a say in so that we can, once this budget is passed, we hand that budget to those departments and it's theirs. They own it. Uh, we want to provide accurate financial information that is easily accessible and understandable to the residents. So as we move through this process and as we move through the year, we will begin to educate the residents on all of the governmental and municipal financing uh, so that the residents are more educated. Um, and, and again, through this process, we want to continue to highlight the financial successes and educate the res residents on governmental accounting. Um, and then one of the things that we, we also want to finish off is optimize village resources through capital improvement planning, preventative maintenance, and asset management. Okay? So if you look at the finance budget, um, again, we, it's, it's less than it was for the previous year, what we're proposing. Um, and what you see is that uh, the mo majority of the costs are in personnel and uh, contractual services. That leaves very little for anything else. And so uh, we're, we're looking to be more efficient in what we do. Uh, and so with that, I'll turn it over to Public Works. Good evening. Good evening. Department summary, uh, for those who can't see the reading, the Department of Public Works is charged with a wi wide range of tasks associated with the village's infrastructure. In addition to the more traditional infrastructure related duties such as street maintenance, safe drinking water delivery, sewer collection and capital improvements, divisions within the department also maintains the village's extensive urban force manage refuse and recycling collections as well as maintain the traffic signals and street lights. Organizational charts includes the director of public works, uh, mechanic, water technician, foreman, administrative assistant, and civil servant. Uh, the foreman manages the laborers part-time or seasonal. Uh, we do have uh, a bus driver and right now the assistant mechanic is uh, a position that's not filled. Personnel summary. Uh, as you can see, we've hovered uh, somewhere between 14 and 15 uh, public works employees over the last several years. Uh, the 16 here obviously is the mechanic, the addition for the assistant a mechanic, obviously, uh, you know, the, the um, publicize uh, events that happened uh, down at Public Works with our last mechanic uh, left the position vacant. Our achievements. <laughs> we maintain uh, the level of service despite our facility and staffing constraints. We had both uh, this past year. We were without a Public Works facility, a functioning office, uh, locker room and so forth and so on for quite a while and obviously our staffing constraints uh, here of late comes with um, uh, sick time, vacation time, uh, time off for off-site training. Uh, refuge and recycling contract we just executed, uh, the board just uh, uh, passed. The service contract with Groot, and for those of you that was not in attendance, Groot has been in the village for the last 40 years. Uh, we uh, negotiated the contract uh, to uh, an 11 percent decrease in what residents was paying. Uh, there is a freeze on the multifamily with increased services, so we're happy about that. As it relates to the capital improvements, they're ongoing, and we'll talk about that a little further down. 
Our goals for this year, I think the mayor made mention of it, uh, and so did our finance uh, department. Upgrades to the water meters are gonna include residential, commercial, and industrial. Uh, we're gonna, uh, in essence, replace all of our old and outdated water meters. And what this will allow us to do is to install smart meters so that residents can have a, a more real-time uh, uh, view of what the actual usage is down to an hour. And that helps us uh, simply because we get inundated with uh, phone calls of folks complaining that the water bill is extremely high. And when we uh, go in and discover that it was used, they uh, want to know when and how. So this will be able to help them identify that. The water tower um, uh, has last been painted 20 years ago. So uh, we had uh, the fund, the water tower fund, uh, building up and, and we're gonna try and put that project to rest this summer. Uh, replacing the transmission water mains on Roosevelt Road has obviously uh, been a point of discussion for many, many years. Uh, the replacement of water mains in the east-west alley south of Roosevelt Road, uh, also alley reconstructing. We're talking mainly behind um, um, the Corner Spot Cafe, that alley 18th to 19th, and then 19th to 20th. Uh, and we've got some uh, north-south alleys that qualified for our CBGD funding uh, that should be addressed also this year. And uh, lastly, to replace our old and outdated equipment, um, a lot of it, uh, you know, street sweeper, front end loader, plows, you want to, again, uh, you know, we're talking about conditions of some of our uh, uh, capital equipment. Part of our frustration is not being able to schedule things properly, uh, not just because of staffing deficiencies on certain days because of uh, those variables, but also uh, the fact that we can't count on a lot of the equipment uh, necessary to perform our daily functions. The street sweeper is probably the most valuable, in my estimates, one of the most valuable pieces of uh, apparatuses that we have down there just simply because it maintains the cleanliness of the streets and, and of course, uh, without clean streets, people don't care what goes on underneath or above it, so. Uh, Front end load. This thing here is, I think, a 1998 model. Uh, and quite frankly, a lot of the things that uh, are up here and, and, and not photographed, and uh, you know, we've got documentation and photographs and hours expended and um, expenses allocated in terms of parts and materials necessary to try and keep these things up and running. We've gotten to a point where it's not uh, it's not feasible anymore. You know, we're literally spending more money and time trying to keep these things up and running uh, on the part-time basis than uh, what we could probably go out and get uh, new machines for. So, and again, just to highlight some of the uh, challenges that we have. So, um, snapshot of expenses and, and budget. Let me say this, um, I believe I became the Director of Public Works in 2009, and since my tenure here, we have operated within uh, our budget every year, with exception to, I believe it was 2010, and we had a natural disaster that we had to uh, address, and that was floods. So, obviously, uh, there's been a reduction over the years in our operating, uh, uh, you know, budget. Uh, and of course, mayor, board, uh, we're gonna do everything in our power to uh, operate within uh, the ever-reducing budget. <laughs> but I do understand. So uh, if in fact we, for whatever reason, ask folks to be patient, it's because we have to the point we have to own our budget. Uh, one of the things uh, that you might want to be mindful of, and, and that is our financing mechanisms for a lot of our things will occur after the fact. For instance, uh, you guys passed 
uh, an ordinance last night or, or an agreement allowing uh, Hancock to put together this uh, facility plan. Well, 80% of our capital needs for the next 25 years are water related. It's water related. So uh, the first thing, at least in my mind, the prudent thing is, is to make sure that we've identified everything that we can identify and then to try and uh, get the alternative funding uh, that will cover these projects, and that is the low interest loan with the IEPA. So uh, while we have money in our healthier fund accounts, water, and also we're, we're able to address the water tower, I just feel it would be more prudent to, if nothing else, make sure that we have all of our applications in, at least for the low interest loan, to see, you know, to your point, we get one bite of the apple, to see exactly how many of the uh, capital improvement projects we can lump into that, because it is 80% of our capital needs are water related, so. Um, and, and lastly, some of our uh, equipment replacement. Uh, I do believe that, uh, there's been some discussion uh, in how that's gonna be financed, but again, before I speak out of turn, I'll uh, the, the, the refer to the finance department at a, at a later time. So um, I think that pretty much concludes our uh, department presentation, mayor, board. So is it your turn? It is. Passing the mic. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna stand over here if you all don't mind with the glare of my glasses here. Good evening, everybody. So just a department summary, the Village of Broadview's Fire Department's primary mission is to protect the lives and property of all residents and vis visitors on a daily basis. This is accomplished through delivery of service of fire suppression operations, emergency medical services, and fire prevention through inspections, public education, and code enforcement, which I'm very proud of because this year we've really put some extra oomph into all of that. The fire department will assist the public in areas of all emergencies and non-emergency situations as well as providing mutual aid to other local and state agencies. The department provides emergency medical care in both advanced and basic life support with highly trained licensed paramedics. So this is our organizational chart starting at the top with myself. Um, I just kind of broke up all the divisions so you could see what goes on pretty much on a daily basis anywhere from pension to safety committee, training division, fire prevention. Um, Again, we did add the fire inspector last year, an extra one temporarily for two years to increase um, the public education and our ability to do uh, pre-plans, which we were lacking the ISO rating. That's We lost a tremendous amount of points there. So this is a temporary move. He will eventually go back to being a firefighter or he's taking the upcoming lieutenant's test. N at no time have we had to hire more people to fill his void. We were able to work around that, and I'll explain a little more of that later. And then we have our firefighting division. We have three uh, captains and two floating lieutenants. You'll see as it comes up, I was going to put in a third lieutenant, hopefully. I'm hoping to do that next year. Um, right now, this just makes more sense. And then we have uh, six firefighter paramedics on uh, each shift, with uh, two of the shifts just having one firefighter and EMTB. Okay, so. You can see the increase, and I'm just gonna hit the highlights here. We've stuck with three captains. Um, in 2015-16, we had, uh, let me give you a brief synopsis of that. When we had layoffs, we had to reduce the amount of not only firefighter paramedics, but we were heavy on officers. We had three captains, three lieutenants, and then we had just two to three paramedic firemen a day. So we'd be going to a fire with a lieutenant driving the vehicle and a captain uh, in the officer seat, and then we'd have two on an ambulance. So we'd have two officers basically running a fire until we increased our manning. It didn't make sense. We needed the firemen and to, it, it helped us save money at that point to thus to increase it later. So we also had in 2015, 15 firefighters and that was increased with us gaining the Heinz contract for fire. Um, inspectors, again, like I said, we increased that to two. Mechanics, we were, this is a blessing. Mechanics who do um, diesel work, are rare. We we're lucky enough to hire one back in 2017. 
he's being mentored by our current mechanic who should be retiring within the next two to three years. So we're really lucky with that. We have saved a lot of money, and you can see that in what we don't spend in that area. We're not sending vehicles out. We're doing a lot of in-house work, which is saving us a lot in labor and reducing the money on parts because we get them ourselves. Um, okay, did I miss anything there? I'm sorry. No, good. Okay, so our fiscal year achievements this past year, we did get the Loyola EMS contract and we increased it, as well as the Madden EMS and fire increase. Um, we opened up our Heinz contract. We're working on that. It hasn't been touched since 2012. We are looking to increase those rates on the EMS side too, which is one of my proposals that's coming up. Um, Tri Triton College is now working up with us with a mentoring program. We're mentoring students in exchange for classes for our firefighters, so that's gonna work out really nice. NIPSTA and IFSI um, gave us training grants. We had about $12,000 this year in training reimbursed back to us. Uh, we rectified all contract billing that's been unpaid since 2012, and I don't know if everybody here knew that um, back then we had an administrative assistant who was very ill, and unfortunately when she was sick, the, um, her doing all the contract billing kind of fell apart. Chris cleaned up that whole mess. We even went back as far as 2010, 11, 12, found some misbilled areas and rebuilt for them. So we did bring all of that money back. Nothing's missing right now. Um, we hosted classes through Cook County Division 20. Example, this week we are hosting a ropes ops class. In that ropes ops class, we have two guys that needed that class. Because we're hosting it, we got one free spot, so we saved ourselves $400. Um, we have plumbing and structural um, issues within the building. It's an old building. Over time, we have to be proactive on replacing those before we have a big issue. So we're picking parts of the building to replace. Uh, again, the increase in mechanics is invaluable. Uh, Division 20, they are now sharing the cost of the tower. Now, unfortunately, they can't come up with 180000 to fix the tower, but they are giving us money to do other things. Since we can't burn in there, we now have... Uh, different training levels on the floors, different pieces of equipment to use, which they are paying for because they are also using. Um, now we charge for services for people out of our division. So if they're not in those 17 departments in our division, they have to pay a cost to use the tower. Now some aren't paying a cost, but they're exchanging services that we can use their tower for explorers and things of that nature. Um, Again, the inspector position has helped us increase ordinance and fines. He has researched what other towns are doing, and we are able to increase those amounts. And then revenue from alarm permits and wireless monitoring, that's been a benefit to the village as well. So our fiscal year goals for 2019, again, after our discussion on Saturday, it made sense to wait until hiring another lieutenant next year. Um, we do have a, an opportunity now to have floating firefighters. So if I have a firefighter that I know is going to be off in a class, rather than fill that with overtime, I'm now giving the guys, it's going to be part of their contract, I'm giving them the opportunity to move shifts temporarily if their shift is heavy that week. So instead of paying overtime, we're moving guys around, and they're really working with us. Um, again, we're opening that tower in the basement to outside training. Loyola is going to be coming in uh, in two weeks and hosting a class by us, thus giving us some free classes by them. Um, uh, the Loyola Fire and Heinz EMS contracts will be coming up again this year. We're going to increase those. We are staffing a second ambulance. We've been doing a temporary staff from 8 to 4. Um, it's basically a sign up if they want to be there kind of thing. Um, it, they do. It's a great extra money for them. It's not overtime money. It's a separate fee that we pay them to come and do this. So we're trying to give more incentives to get them to come back. Having that second ambulance in service brings a lot of funds to this village. It helps us maintain our contracts, which we don't want to lose those. Um, fundraising for the Fire Explorer program. The kids are getting out there. They're doing extra fundraising um, in the next two months. Um, we're increasing grant opportunities. Um, it was excellent. Chief Eugling brought in somebody that both he and I can split the cost of to help increase grant funding for us. Um, we've been writing grants, but unfortunately, there's people know about them now. It's a much bigger pool of people putting in for them, so this helps us a lot. Again, we're going to change ordinances and reflect new fines. Um, the smoke detector program that used to be part of our um, regular public education program, or the funds were coming from um, that area. Instead, now we've worked with IFSI and uh, um, the state to get, like I talked about on Monday night, that new uh, program where we get free smoke detectors. And then we're doing car seat inspections. We just ironically had one today, and that's free. Not a lot of people know about it. That will be out because this just happened. That'll be out in my summer newsletter. 
So here's a snapshot, and somebody asked about the increase to um, my pay scale, and I can show you here. Um, 2000, uh, we'll go down to percentages because that makes a difference right there. It's not a major increase, however, lieutenants, captains, uh, inspectors, the deputy chief and myself, we have not had raises for three years. We were waiting until another contract was done. We hit that increase for a differential of 8.9% above the ranks. Had we not done that, firefighters and lieutenants would be making the same pay. So we brought it back up to the differential. Um, looking at employee benefits, that didn't go up a lot either. We are losing a lot of senior members, bringing in younger, newer people. Um, I'm also not taking benefits. Uh, contractual services and commodities, those are decreasing because we're really researching ways to save money. For example, having classes. Um, I'm going through old contracts of cleaning supplies. We're going to bring somebody in and reduce the cost in cleaning supplies. Every month I look at a contract that we hold and see, is there somebody better out there? I'm a Marshalls and a TJ Maxx kind of gal, so I look for those things. Um, as far as capital outlays, that's decreasing. We don't have any big projects right now except for our bay floor. Um, and then contingencies, that's just what's been in the contracts for the guys that's carrying over. That's it? I'm done. Next. <laughs> All right. I'll make sure. Good evening, everyone. All right, department summary. The police department is a full service law enforcement agency serving the citizens of the village of Broadview. The mission of the department is to pro provide high quality police services that are accessible to all members of the community. The department believes in the dignity of all the people and respect individual and constitutional rights in fulfilling this mission. In order to achieve this mission, the department has adopted community based policing, which includes the following components citizenship, citizen involvement problem solving and quality of life focus, ethical behavior, situational leadership, and employee value. It is our goal to incorporate these values in the organization and throughout our interaction with the community to promote a desirable quality of life in the community. With the commitment to ma maintaining and improving peace, order, and safety through excellence in law enforcement and community service. All right, the organizational chart is uh, myself, I have an administrative assistant and a one deputy chief. There are two commanders. I have a commander of operation and a commander of administrative. The administrative commander basically is in charge of the uh, records and dispatch center. Uh, also falls under him is our traffic car. Well, we have, we have a canine car out there. When he's not doing the canine stuff, he's, he's my traffic car also. Uh, look underneath the operations. That's patrol and detectives. I have a five total sergeants, I have a detective sergeant, and four patrol sergeants. Uh, I have two detectives, and I have uh, a tactical unit, and an um, officer assigned to a, a narcent unit, is a um, state police drug unit. The shifts are divide, uh, divided, there's four uh, shifts there, you'll see uh, pod A's, uh, days and evening, pod B, days and evenings. We have 12 hour shifts, uh, so the officers, um, every other weekend, they're off to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, there's one sergeant in charge of each pod. Uh, if you look at the historical uh, personnel summary, pretty much been um, status quo the whole way, 37 total. Um, I'll get into more, yeah, okay. Uh, that's good, go ahead, Nicholas, that's fine. All right, achievements, uh, promoted a sergeant and lieutenant. Uh, um, Sergeant Tom Cost was promoted to lieutenant and uh, patrolman Pierre Smith was uh, promoted to sergeant. We created a new patrol strategy which reduced calls. Um, we saw that uh, there were some, I'm gonna be frank with you, there were some fluff numbers in there. <laughs> and uh, we changed the way we do our strategy, we changed the way we patrol. And it's not just because uh, it was called directed patrols, the officer was getting credit for doing their job, just driving or uh, patrolling. We knocked that out. Um, we do not have 25,000 calls here in Broadview, and that's what it was showing. We're more about 18,000 per year, so we're back down where we should be. Intergovernmental agreement with Maywood Police for 911 consolidation. Uh, that is the big talk. It is a big, uh, big undertaking we're going to have. 
Maywood Dispatch is basically are going to come over here. Uh, it's going to be Maywood and Broadview together. We're going to be dispatching police and fire. Uh, it's, it's, it's big because we've got to get on the same page because uh, Maywood might, might want to do things differently. We do things differently, so we have to get on the same page with that. Uh, we selected a construction uh, manager for um, the 911 consolidation build out in the Village Hall renovation. Uh, we be, we'll be working with that uh, for the next year. Um, as the mayor mentioned, uh, contract with a collection agency. Uh, we were up to $1.6 million in outstanding fees, uh, fines, and uh, now the, the money's starting to come in now with that. Uh, multi jurisdictional drug incinerator uh, savings disposal and EPA fees. What this is, when we have to destroy our drugs, we used to have to drive out to Rockford and you had to pay an EPA fee and everything else. What we did, we, we got together with Maywood, Westchester, Hillside, the surrounding towns. We all put our money in together. We have a portable incinerator and now we, everybody destroys the drugs and uh, it's EPA uh, compliance and we save a lot of money with that. We obtained a grant from uh, Illinois Department of Transportation for distracted driving. In fact, that is going on this week, this week and next week. Uh, it's paying the overtime for all the uh, texting while driving, talking on the cell phone while driving. Obtained uh, nasal Narcan uh, with the Cooperation Department of Homeland Security. Um, the Narcan is free, basically, uh, for us uh, through this. It's a, we had, um, we had a, um, it was an injector before with a needle that would retract. Uh, this nasal is more potent and it's safer because there are no needles involved and it's no cost. It, uh, we replenish it through Loyola Hospital, um, thanks to the Department of Homeland Security. Implemented five policies. Uh, one of the main ones is the overtime management policy. We now um, control the overtime, uh, who gets the overtime, and what the overtime is used for. What I mean by that, there's some instances where there might be a last minute call and there might have to be a report. If it's not a major report and the officer's working the next day, they could come in the next day and finish the report instead of sticking around one or two hours and making overtime on it. So we changed that a little bit. Uh, we auctioned off three decommissioned squad cars. We grossed, uh, we found an auction house that we actually made $16,000 and I was surprised we got that much because these cars, <laughs> I didn't think were worth that much, but uh, it worked out good. And we destroyed 141 uh, guns. Uh, we just got the video on that and so it's, it's all complete and uh, that was free of cost also. So. Uh, some goals, I have um, two officers who have applied for disability pension. Uh, they've been, I haven't had them in over a year now. My goal is to replace them. Um, 911 consolidation should be completed. Uh, we are, state statute, we're supposed to be complete by the end of this year. Um, we're working on it. If we have to, we'll get an extension, but we're on target right now. Uh, construction phase of the village hall build out uh, ha has started as I've, we've been talking about this uh, for about a month now. Uh, hopefully, uh, shortly, you'll see the construction starting, and this is going to be big, too, because we're going to stay here, we're going to stay working while the construction is going on. Uh, maintaining the current fleet rotation, uh, which I'm going to, I want to try to replace two frontline uh, squad cars per year. Uh, this is important to know because in, within three years, a squad car could have 120,000 miles on it. And you have to remember, because of all the equipment in there, these cars have to stay running. So you can't turn them off and restart them because the computer's reset and everything else. So you double that, and a, a car in three years can have 240,000 miles on that motor. Uh, so what we did, we found um, through Ford uh, and the Explorers, it's a seven-year warrant, seven-year 150,000 mile warranty for police, especially for police, uh, which is big because as Direct Range will tell you, I mean, the last couple of years, we were lined up at Public Works trying to get our squads fixed, and they only had one mechanic there. So a lot of time we had to outsource also. So this is going, in the long run, it's going to be a savings. Uh, and Broadview will be host to uh, the law enforcement torch run. This is, uh, I'm big in the Special Olympics. I, I, I'm hoping to get down there for the opening ceremonies this year. The torch run, we're hoping to plan with uh, Westchester, Broadview, and Forest Park, and it's going to come right down Roosevelt Road, and uh, it's for a good cause. So, as you will see, the bulk of the village budget is the police side. And, uh, historically, if you look back uh, from 2015-16, you see about a three percent um, increase there. What had happened is um, there's not as much one from 16. What it is I have 21, 21 patrol officers. I have three unions within the police department, and with that being said. 
31 out of my 37 employees are all under union contracts. So with that being said, union contracts, the raises are under contract, retro pay, and you can see patrolmen and telecommunicators, their contract expired 2016. Sergeants expired 2017. So if you look between 2017 and 2018, there's a very modest increase there because there were no contracts. Now we're projecting the contracts hoping to be settled this, and that's where you see the increase going into 2019 uh, budget. And you'll see that 80%, um, well over 80% is personnel cost. And that's my budget. So now we'll take you through the general fund. Go ahead, Tom. So when you look for revenue, um, this is just a pie chart. You see the two biggest pieces of the pie are property taxes and other taxes uh, and uh, intergovernmental uh, and charges for services at 9%. Nine, nine um, pretty much. So when you look at the <coughs> This is a summary of, of revenue by uh, category. So you look at property taxes is 39%, other taxes is 30%, uh, intergovernmental is 12, um, licenses, uh, permits and fees is about 4%. The other big uh, chunk is uh, charges for services. Um, so from last year's budget to this year's budget is about a 200 uh, 60,000 uh, increase that we're looking to uh, uh, come in. Uh, the big thing to point out here is the, the big increase in property taxes, and that's from the, uh, the expiration of the TIF. So those TIF funds will now come in uh, in the general fund through the regular property tax. Um, so here's just a, a, a trend of revenue so that you can see uh, the, how the, the breakdown has, has been. Um, Pretty much uh, 60, 70 percent of uh, the revenues come from taxes. Um, as to grow as a village, we, we have to grow uh, the non-tax revenue uh, because uh, property taxes is, is capped by uh, the consumer price index, and so uh, we we don't anticipate we can anticipate that taxes will go up significantly enough to uh, cover any of the. The, the vision that the, the mayor set forth. Uh, go ahead, next slide. So we talk about the, the snapshot, police and fire, public safety. So keeping the village safe is one of the, the most uh, important. And one of the things I, I, I meant to say at the beginning, the budget should be a numerical representation of the strategy of the village. And so as you see, we're pouring, uh, we're making sure that our, that our police and fire are adequately funded to perform at a high level has, is, has been and will continue to be a priority for uh, the village. Next slide. So when you look at the categories, um, so personnel and employee benefit, um, that's the, you know, that's 76% of the budget. Uh, contractual services, those are the, you know, services that, that are absolutely needed, that we as a village do have the expertise to provide, so we need to uh, outsource those um, uh, services, and so that, that's a big chunk there. Um, and what you see in this, this um, in other, is the contingency, and that is for the, uh, the contracts that haven't been renewed um, that are currently being negotiated. So we wanted to separate that out to, so that you guys would understand and make sure that um, that's to bring those guys whole from their last contract to what their new contract is. We want to make sure that, that we highlighted that. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a budget shop snapshot, excuse me, by department. So uh, again, you can see the budgets uh, in total by departments versus the last year's budget. Again, just a slight increase from prior, uh, prior year budget of about $372,000. Uh, and again, the majority of that increase is for the retro payments. 
Um, we've kept most of the departments flat or cut their budgets, um, but in order to get the, the to maintain uh, the ser levels of services, we have to negotiate their contracts because those are the frontline folks. And so if we don't take care of those folks, um, we have issues. And um, uh, so we wanted to make sure that we included that in this year's budget. Next slide. Uh, so this is just the same, uh, this just shows the, the, the total budgets uh, by department. Um,
For our capital projects, there's, a, there's some explaining to, to, to do on this. Um, because of the nature of where we're at at this time in doing the budget and the uncertainties of the, um, the union negotiations and other expenses that won't be hammered out for, for a, a few, few more weeks, I was very conservative here. In the expenditures in the capital fund, we have the costs that are necessary for the 911 project. We have the costs that are remaining to be paid on the roof, for the, most of it was paid last year, and we have one equipment purchase. And the equipment purchase is um, contingent on our financing for the 911 project. What is going to happen through the financing is all the money that the village has been putting up to, to, to get us to where we're at is going to be reimbursable to the capital fund. We will then have those funds to do other capital projects. But until the bond is actually issued, that, that won't be available. So we're looking at starting in June, the whole process of, of issuing the bonds, and in an August final issue where the funds would come into the capital fund, we'll be able to do our reimbursements and move forward with other capital projects at that time. So at this point, we're being very conservative of what we're lift, listing in the capital projects fund, but we may be able to add more in the future. And that point, we, we will have to come to the board to adjust the capital, um, capital projects budget. But when we do that, we're going to say we want to spend X, and here's where the money's coming from. We will have the offsetting revenues and expenditures at that time. Right now, this is a very conservative budget with just only the expenses which we have to pay in there. Next. Uh, the water fund um, is still got is still got a few um, issues in it. It's still a very strong fund. Um, going backwards, you can see that. Um, it, there's a lot of fluctuation in what is actually spent. We budget a lot for water main repairs. Some years we don't spend it because the, the mains don't break and we, we end up with surpluses. That's accumulated. Some years we have to spend money out of here. And this year I, I have placed a water main upgrade, a, a replacement of the it's actually the same water main we talked about last year. We did not do it, um, which is 17th Avenue North. And I've also put in here the water meter project. Now, I'm going to go into a little detail on that. Um, as Matt has, has referenced, we have the opportunity for some low interest rate loans for our water projects. Part of getting that low interest rate loan is being able to show, show the solvency of our water fund and how much money we are going to be able to make to pay back these loans. One of the issues that has dogged us for several years now is water loss. And when we talk about that, it's not so much water spray, it's what we're buying versus what we sell. There is a discrepancy. Now, there's natural occurrences of this. Water breaks, water just runs down the street. Um, there, there can be changes that make one meter more accurate than another meter. Um, when the Joint Water District changed their meters, all of a sudden, we were buying more water from them. Well, what I've learned through talking to some of the companies that, 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 that do the meters as the manual meters actually become less accurate over time. Anywhere from 10 to 20 percent, once you get over, help me out now, is it 15 years or 20 years? Do you remember? Yeah. He's not listening. I'm sorry. 
When, when did they say that the increase, is it after 15 years that, for the water meters and that the, they start to lose their accuracy? About 15. 15. Yeah. We could be putting the water out to our customers and not charging them for it because of the age of our meters. After 15 years, they expect the manual, the old type meters, to be 10, 15, 20% off. The new meters have no manual parts, they're more electronic, and they will more accurately catch the correct amount of water usage. That could be an explanation of the difference between what we're buying and what we're selling, is we're getting charged off accurate meters and we're selling it off of older meters that are 20 plus years old. By bringing us up to date on our water meters, that will help out the water fund, which will then sh show a better profit margin for us to help support our debt to, or I'm saying debt, but to help support our loan payments on the IEPA funds. So what I'm, I'm proposing here is that we fix the problem before we go out and try to to fix the other problems by borrowing money. Use the funds we have to fix a problem that we know exists and move forward. So the big capital, uh, big expenses in this particular fund are the water meters and one water main. Next. Um, the garbage fund pretty straightforward. Um, decrease, we're going to get a, a decrease in the charges that we, that we are paying. Um, what I did is subtracted out that from our expense, which put us back having a, a, a increase in our, in our um, performance each year. What we need to do, though, is monitor this agreement going forward and make sure that we don't let our margin evaporate with the increases, contractual, scheduled contractual increases in our costs. And we kind of let that go over the last few years. Each year, the, 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 the amount it was costing us to have the trash picked up increased, but we never increased that cost, or pass that cost on to the residents. And it essentially, was was eating up eating up our profit margin. The IMRF fund accounts for state mandated pension funds for all full time and eligible part time village employees, except for the fire and police employees. Um, essentially, we are transferring money in there to pay our Social Security, Medicare, what's it, food and FICA, and um, the IMRF portion is levied and it also goes in there. The motor fuel tax fund um, is funds that the village receives that are designated for certain purchases mainly to do with streets. Um, we have pretty much steady revenues coming in around $200,000 a year. And um, right now, there are no expenditures budgeted. And I'm going to explain why. One of the big projects that we have going on is Braga Drive. And Braga is an 80-20 pro uh, project where the village is going to pay $2 million for this and, and we're going to federal loan for the rest of it. So we're, we're going to have a significant federal funds come in to help us get that done. We have the $2 million set aside. Last year, from the you might recall from the budget meeting, we decided that we were going to take 600000 to do some streets over in the industrial park and replace that with money out of the MFT and water funds um, because um, uh, Hancock Engineering had broken out the, the um, Braga project and identified costs that could be paid out of the MFT funds and the water fund based upon their nature. At this point, we have, one point, uh, we have a uh, 
$1.5 million beginning balance in there, there is money in there to do something with our streets. But we want to, to be sure that we are protecting the federal funds that we're getting over the next couple, two, three, two or three years. And that's why I, at this time, I'm not proposing any expenditures out of this fund. Okay, CDBG fund. You guys have been here, you all, you, but most of you all are familiar with this. This is a communi community development block grant that we um, get each year, um, and we can use it on capital improvements. We're looking to get a $400,000 grant this year. Um, if once that's approved, we have a project selected. Um, Alley's on the north side of Roosevelt, is that right, Matt? Um, the village from the general fund will be transferring the difference. Um, so the grant plus the transfer from the general fund will totally pay for the project in the CDBG fund. TIFs. Okay, Roosevelt. Roosevelt, we budgeted 63,000. We had a very nice bounce back this year of over 300,000 coming in um, for revenue. Um, what we are, what we are scheduling, or we're proposing for expenditures, um, are the development agreements of which we've already entered into, plus the program payments. Now, in addition to those, we have um, proposed transferring $375,000 from the Roosevelt TIF into the 17th Avenue TIF. This is called porting funds between adjacent TIFs. What we're going to do with that money when it gets to the 17th Avenue TIF is help the senior um, senior housing development by purchasing some property there and consolidating the land to make it more favorable to get the project done. 22nd and 17th, um, there ain't, it, basically this TIF closed on December 31st of 2017. What we have left in there right now is $875,000, which earn $900 in interest. Um, it'll, if it doesn't go anywhere, it'll probably earn a $900 more. Um, but what this money is for is simply to pay back to the county any tax liabilities that might come up due to appeals of value. If those cases all go away, that money will then be rebated to all the taxing bodies. All right, on 23rd and, and uh, 17th, um, the expenditures are the annual audit that's required. Um, and there is a, the other thing that we pay out of here is the um, interest expense on the loan that they took out to retrofit the plant years ago. Um, they just recently did this year. So we probably will, will not get another request, but until we refund the $2,005,000 to Headley, um, this will just continue to roll. It'll build up fund balance, and once the loan is paid off or the uh, interest commitment is paid off, we'll be able to close the TIF or, or it'll expire on its own. 17th Avenue. Ain't much going on in 17th. Um, the, the, the really sad part about 17th is the actual eva evaluation of the property there, there now is about 60% of the frozen valuation. Um, but what is happening is it is 
the location of the senior housing development. And what we expect to happen within this TIF is we are going to, to have the money ported in from the other financing, which we just talked about at Roosevelt, and we will use that to purchase the, purchase the property in question. 19th Street, finally, after how many, how many years, the village has been reimbursed for the costs that it fronted to um, establish this TIF. Going forward, whatever comes in in revenue is going to go out in a payment to the developers. So they're, they're recapturing the tax increment until they are fully repaid. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be self, kind of self. If, if, they, if, if the revenue is 130, we're going to send 130. If it's you know, $10, we'll send $10. It's, it's kind of self-running. Well, that's all of them. Okay. What you got next? Do any of the trustees have any questions or comments? No, for the budget hearing. Yes, you can ask a question. Can you step up to the mic? Then you cannot answer your question. You need to step up to the mic or you will not be allowed to make your comment. If you don't step up to the mic, you will not be allowed to make a comment. Okay, question. Uh, you talked about the, uh, I was, he was talking about the grants. Are we still looking for, there's other grants out there for capital improvement. I just wanted to know where we're going to be still looking into that. Also, some colleges give out free uh, for the students, uh, so we can cut the budget on that. As uh, far as uh, cleaning and all that stuff, I was looking into that. Also, uh, still, I didn't get the answer that the mayor's salary is increasing for 2000 but the trustee's salaries are not increasing, and neither is the clerk's salary. Now, if we would like to do that, I looked at some of the office expenditures. If we cut $4,000 off for each one, we can increase them as well, because if, they're, if you're getting 2000 I think out of fairness that the clerk and also the trustee should also be getting an increase as well. And that was just my comment. Thank you. Just to be clear on the salary, my salary cannot go up during my term. So this is a salary that's created by ordinance. So does the trustees or have any questions or comment? Um, Trustee Brown Marino? Okay. Um, well, you're right. Your sal uh, the mayor's salary cannot go up during your term yet. And, and by the way, we've got several versions of this budget. The one that Mr. Hicks gave us um, April 2nd, uh, yesterday afternoon, Mr. Hood sent another version, and then there's another version sitting here tonight. There are some minor differences, mm -hmm. but um, the uh, uh, budget from Mr. Hood included the actual figures from fiscal year 18. We had some of this from Mr. Hicks before, but it shows that the mayor received $4,143 above what her... Uh, uh, what her compensation is supposed to be. And that includes, I, I'm, I'm figuring with the mayor's salary and liquor commissioner, which was rolled into that figure, it's still considerably more than it was supposed to be. I don't know how that happened, but that was last year. This year, in terms of the trustees, one of my concerns, we're showing trustee salaries. Now this is in Mr. Hood's budget. Uh, and this is also in the one from tonight that the trustee salaries are 26,400. They should be 25,200, which is what was in Mr. Hick's budget before. What I think is going on is that trustee Tierney is getting the is being budgeted to get the $400 a month, not the $300 a month that he should be getting if that's what it is because that's this is $1200 more than what it should be. So because Mr. Tierney is filling the vacancy 
uh, of Tara Brewer's term, that's the term, that's the salary he should be receiving. So that needs to be corrected, uh, both in payroll and, and in the budget. Um, I also noticed in the executive uh, budget, there's nothing in there for retiree health insurance uh, and dental insurance, which has been, you know, 30, over $3,000, three to $4,000 in the previous year. So I don't know why that was excluded, um, concerned about that. Also in the professional services, um, Mr. Hicks was showing 69,000. This has been reduced to 35,000. When I saw Mr. Hicks' figure, I assumed that that included the uh, $48,000 a year that we're paying to the lobbyist, because yes. that the lobbyist is coming out of professional services here, correct? Yes. Well, the 35,000 that's in Mr. Hood's budget, and I don't know which budget we're supposed to be voting on. So, oh, the 45 or 35,000 that's in Mr. Hood's budget is not even enough to cover just the lobbyist, much less any other professional services that um, you would come across. So I think that number needs to be addressed as well. Um, now, we are showing roughly $11, $11 million in bond proceeds going into the capital projects fund, I believe. Um, what we don't show is how, where, the, where the debt service is going to come from uh, for whatever period. Now, I realize we wouldn't necessarily be looking at an entire year. I don't know when we're actually going to sell the bonds, when the debt service will begin, but I think it's important that we address this. What we were told is that uh, initially, at, at least, until the 911 center is able to start generating uh, revenue to offset these bonds, that it needs to be covered by the uh, general fund. The general fund finance department used to have uh, line items for debt service when we had the other bonds that were sold or were paid off in 2015. So I would think that there should be something in that those line items to reflect what we anticipate will be paying for debt service. So for example, if we sell the bonds six months into the year, we should probably be allotting 400,000 for the debt. You see what I mean? There, there needs to be some way to address what our obligation is going to be once these bonds are sold. And especially, uh, to go back to the Capital Projects Fund, or actually, as I've gone through the budget, I don't see anything in here about the street project. Now, February 20th, we approved a contract with uh, Hancock Engineering to do the engineering work for our street project and that was supposed to include several streets, 13th Avenue, uh, other streets north of Roosevelt, 13th Avenue south of uh, Roosevelt, other streets north of Roosevelt, what have you, uh, 18th Street. Um, I don't see any line item in here to cover the streets project. And I'm concerned because I've a I had asked at the finance committee meeting and, and other opportunities what we're doing with that 10 to 12 million dollars in bonds. And I was told that that is what the budget is, that's what we're looking at for this expansion and the addition and all that. Um, that it's not being earmarked for other things. So I'm concerned that if we don't acknowledge the expense that you know we just told Hancock we want to take on, we're going to start eating into that bond proceeds and uh, Next thing you know, we don't have the money there that we need. Also in the Capital Projects Fund, uh, Mr. Hicks' budget included $550,000 in the Water and Sewer Fund to buy a new street sweeper. Uh, that's been taken out of the Water and Sewer Fund in Mr. Hood's budget, but it's been put into the Capital Projects Fund budget. Now some of these expenses in the Capital Projects, the other two, the $170,000 for professional services, and the 265.13 for building, no, yeah, yeah, that would be for the building. I assume that that is what we anticipate we'd be spending this year for the 911 project. But we're looking at a deficit as it is, and um, the 550,000, it appears, is again going to be eating into the uh, bond proceeds because there's nothing else in here that reflects 
I mean, there is the 272,000 transfer from the general fund, which is the uh, balance of the rollover bonds, but that's not enough to cover the 550,000 uh, that we see in there now. Uh, there's a couple other things. The garbage fund, for example, um, I see that we're looking we're looking at pretty much pretty close to the same expenses and revenue as we've had in previous years. My concern with this, we had an, a, um, an invoice from Groot on the a warrant list for Monday for $59,000. And I was concerned about that, so I took a look at that invoice, and we are being billed. This is how that invoice got that high. That's for our residential service. And that's because we are being billed $12.25 for each residential property for garbage pickup, and we were billed another $12.25 for each residential property for uh, recycling pickup, which is what a couple of us talked about in terms of that contract. And that's what I saw in that invoice. None of that is reflected in here um, in terms of either increased revenue, because we're going to, that's $24.50 right there. That doesn't even include the dumping fees. So we're going to have to increase people's garbage rates based on that contract. Um, and we're also going to have to increase the amount of the expenses. So the garbage fund is inaccurate. I'd also point out that when it comes to the dumping fees, every year we budget $144,000. And you can see from the figures that Mr. Hood has here the, uh, for previous years, 189, 167. The 144,000 is not a realistic figure. Um, let me see. Street project, bond payments. I just want to make sure I cover everything with my that I have in my notes. Um, the other thing that I want to point out, when I looked at when I first got this budget from Mr. Hood yesterday afternoon, uh, that didn't leave a lot of time to go through every single line item. And there are other things in here I'm sure that I would probably bring up if I had more time to actually read it. But going through the revenue. The first thing I did was compare the totals in Mr. Hood's budget to the totals in Mr. Uh, Hick's budget. Mr. Hick's budget showed a projected a general fund deficit of a million nine, just shy of a million nine. This budget has a general fund excess of about twelve thousand dollars. So what I noticed is that just looking at the totals, there was about eight hundred and five thousand in expenditures that were removed. I haven't identified all of those yet. The revenue was increased by about a million dollars. And that really surprised me. Um, as I looked at some of these things, there are some figures in revenue that I don't think are at all realistic. Uh, specifically, the intergovernment, uh, general ledger number 4028, intergovernmental, we're projecting $315,000. Now, last year, the budget, we budgeted for $200,000 in that line item. We got nothing. Uh, the, grant, the federal grant funds were projecting $70,000. Last year, we uh, projected $137,000. We got nothing. Um, when it comes to the hospital billings, the budget, the hospital billings and ambulance charges, the budgeted figures of $600,000 and $475,900, uh, respectively, are the same thing that we budgeted in 2018. And similar uh, numbers were budgeted in 2017. Our actual figures for 2018, instead of $600,000, we took in $514,000. But when it comes to the ambulance charges, instead of $475,900, we actually took in a little over $10,000, which is the same as what we took in in 2017. Um, not only here, but also according to the auditors. So, and also the traffic fines. Uh, last year we budgeted 200, or projected 255,000. We took in 203,000. This year we've increased that to 330,000. And then finally, on the reimbursement of village expense, we are budget, we're projecting 116,000. 
Last year we budgeted 150,000, we took in 88,000. So what I'm saying is I'm concerned that we've got some real rosy, uh, overly optimistic and unrealistic projections in the revenue. There's a technique um, that Henry Basinic used to use and it was discussed quite a bit. In fact, this is one of the, the things that uh, the treasurer at the time, Ruth Mitchell, talked a lot about, that they were force balancing. They would look at what they wanted to spend and then massage the revenue numbers to make it look like it's a balanced budget. So these are my concerns with this budget. I'm also really angry that this whole thing has been a shell game. Um, I was not told, and from what I understand, Trustee Ely wasn't told, that we were gonna have the budget hearing tonight. We didn't learn that until Monday evening. We weren't told that there was gonna be a special meeting until it came out during that meeting. Um, the, the people who, and I'm looking at very familiar faces in the audience, the people who attended the uh, finance committee meeting, the April 2nd meeting, or watched it on TV, and went and bothered to look in the suburban life and watch for the notices, were all told it was gonna be Monday, and there was no warning until we walked in here Monday night and saw it that there was gonna be a meeting tonight. Not true. Yes, the, yes, it's true. Did it come from Mr. Was that published in the newspaper for tonight's hearing? Tonight's hearing was published in the newspaper, correct? It was, it was published in the Sun Times. Right, and, and by law, you've managed to figure out a way managed to, 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 you've managed to comply. The words comply with you, thank you. You managed to comply. But that doesn't change the fact that you broadcast to everyone, including, it was published in the Sun-Times, apparently, but it was also published in the Suburban Life. No, and there was, the left woman as well. but it doesn't change the fact that you, do, you did this, you made the decision to move it to another day, but then you never bothered to Does tell that anybody your, that you did that. Does that conclude your comments, Trustee Brown Marino? You know, let me just say this. There's a reason why we do this. There, there, we're, we're, we're supposed to be financially responsible. And as I've said before, those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. And I am seeing one thing after another, after another, after another, that mirrors everything that Henry Vicinic was doing that led to the, the massive layoffs and the austerity program and having no money, not even enough to cover the payroll at the time. And I see us doing the same things. So I have to speak out about it. I have to alert you. And there's no way I can vote for this Thank to you. approve this budget. Trustee I don't Horn. even know which budget it is we're supposed to be voting Trustee Horn. Um, Madam President. Uh, Trustee uh, Jones Gold. Next, Trustee Horn please. asked me to go next. She she's working That's, on Okay, them. Trustee Jones. Okay. Um, the first thing, well, I wasn't. Uh, first of all, I apologize for my absence Monday. I had some personal issues on in Monday's meeting. Um, one thing that just came up that I was not aware of was this uh, Groot issue. I would I would request that that the mayor and the public works director uh, look into whatever this billing issue may or may not be with Groot. Yeah, I, I have no idea what it. What, director what's Ames. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, you know. Okay, so, so well, well, it's a, it's a Q and A at this point. Cause so, so my question is, what happened with groups? Absolutely nothing. And, and the problem that we have is either you cannot comprehend Trustee Brown Marino exactly what you're seeing from them. Is that the? Are those the invoices yes, from Monday? Can we turn on the light? Yes, it is. But, but you misinformed these residents. Is problematic. Well, well, calm down a minute. Just, just state what it is. It, direct your response to me, please. I'm, I'm asking the question. I, it, it's based okay, on let's, what you let's, said. Let's, so let's, I just want to know what happened. Let's go over the current, the current invoices with group. Okay? As, as we try to make you all aware, when Frank Hellegon was here, and the facts of the matter is it's self evident. Okay? So this is the most current invoice. Mm -hmm. Mayor Jones. <laughs> Not Mayor Jones, I'm Trustee Jones. Uh, the Mayor, Mayor Thompson over here. Mayor Thompson, Trustee Jones. What you have here are invoices that are broken out by multifamily collection, which is this first page. Uh, you have a rate of $10.45 per unit. 
this um, next page is an invoice for the month of March for the rural services. It calls for disposal fees and transportation fees for the rural services. Uh, this invoice, I believe, that Trustee Brown Arena was alluding to, and if in fact you want to look at it in detail, uh, Trustee Jones, you see that the rate is exactly what the contract called for. I think her mistake was looking at the month. You see, three one and four one. There's yeah, two, two separate, two separate months. There's okay. not a recycle or refuse. So please stop missing forming folks about the contract. Can I see that invoice? Anything else? Uh, oh well, I got the list of stuff here. I, I just asked about group. So group, group, and, and that's because it just came up. Um, what? I, I need to talk to the guys from the finance department and, and possibly the mayor. Because I need to know specifically exactly which one of these things we are supposed to be uh, considering. Because uh, when I say things, I'm talking about budgets because we got multiple copies of the budget, you know, and and it, and it wasn't attached to the legislation, so there was no actual budget attached to the legislation. So I got a piece of legislation for a budget, but it's it's not directly related to any one of the budgets that were presented. That's that's number one. Uh, number two, the budgets had differences in of, of approximately two million dollars mm -hmm. and I guess the question that I have for you guys is what actually was your process in the last week that eliminated the the, the deficit and created the surplus so that everybody knows you know what happened Get all your questions. do we got there okay well I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go through them. so um, then the next thing was was what numbers did you uh, used to create the set aside for the uh, uh, retroactive payments. Uh, was there a specific percentage number that you used? Was there a finite dollar amount that you used, or whatever the case may be? Um, and also, I wanted to just uh, make a comment about something that was said in, in the presentation. You know, the process that we were current, the, the current mayor is actually using, is not completely different from what we've been using for the last several years. You know, we, we changed it quite a bit when we got in, in office, uh, Tim, to make sure that all the department heads were involved. They didn't get to this kind of detail where they gave presentations individually, but they were all in the room. What I will commend the mayor on in this particular case is um, presenting what we always saw behind the scenes, uh, where we had a wish list from all the department heads. And this is what I think happened. I don't know, that's what I think happened is that we created a budget based on what we initially talked about before we trimmed everything down and then presented it. You know, because the guys get in the back rooms, each one of the department heads has these wish lists of all these things they want, and pay raises, they want to buy the world, and all this other stuff. And so we sit back there, and, and, and Tom will testify to this, that in these budget meetings that we have with these department heads, Tom will come to me with this ridiculous number, and it'll be a $3 million deficit. You know, and, and that's the thing, what, what happened. Uh, so that's, that's the comment that I wanted to make about it and just ask you guys what the process was for you to trim it down to where it is. Okay, let me go on to the next item um, and the set aside. Um, the capital projects uh, timelines. Um, one of the reasons why uh, budgets were not approved by April 30th in prior years was because we had capital outlays that we did not know exactly what the funds were gonna be, what we were gonna receive, what the ultimate expenditures may or may not be. And some of those helped, along with contract negotiations, help push our timeline to have the budget done past the scheduled deadline. Um, water meters. When you guys talk about water meters, I, what I want to know is what's the ROI on that? Um, what percentage of that water loss have you guys calculated or computed to, to determine what the value of getting these new water meters may be. How much of that, how, how, how much of that gap are we gonna be able to close? What percentage of that do you guys think, based on these new meters, are we gonna be able to capture? Yeah, huh? That, that's an uh, it, Well, I mean, he said 10%, 12% loss from the old meters, so I'm just saying, if, if over what the term was 10 or 12 years, they, they, they lose, whatever, 10 to 15 years, 12 to 15 years, all of a sudden they're not as efficient. Is there any way of having any idea of what, what we may be able to recoup or, or whatever the case may be? 
Um, well, the, the, go ahead. If, if I can interject. Sure. Yeah. Let me say this. Right now, mm -hmm. I think you know we expand approximately 140 man hours. Uh -huh. Okay, so if we extend that out uh, uh, per month, mm -hmm. uh, I think that your recoup, your rate of return of, uh, uh, would probably. Uh, you talk about labor. You talk about labor. Just the labor. Uh, okay, just, okay. Just well, the well, labor. and, and, and to, 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 with that being said, you know, if, if you include labor, and, and even if it's a 5% recoupment of, of the water, there, there could be some kind of a number that could be presented to the board to say, listen, this is what we expect to get by replacing the meters. Um, the next thing is, is when we look at the revenues by department, I, um, I would like to see from the police department uh, and from the building department, the revenues that we get for administrative tolls, tickets and citations, the money that we get for the shooting range, uh, separated out so that we know exactly what we're getting. Because I do know we have adjudication process. How much is, is being uh, captured in our adjudication process internally that, that's not going to Maple, so that we can tell the public, hey, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, and, and why we pay attorneys to do this. Because we do have a, a, a village attorney that actually is, is in on all of those court cases. Um, and that's the adjudication process. And finally, the last two things is, um, if we do not have an approved uh, budget by April 30th, what happens? Is there a penalty? Uh, does somebody go to jail? What happens? Hold, hold on, let me, let me get the last question down. If we don't have this budget by April 30th, can we create legislation the same way the state did to approve uh, daily operations until such, such time that the budget is created? <coughs> Um, and, and I'll stop right there. So those, those are the last two questions I've got, and, and anybody can answer. So, um, let's, so you guys jotted down all the questions from Brown Marino to Trustee Jones. Trustee uh, Terry? Yeah, I, I talked to the chiefs particularly. You guys have a bunch of new people, and they have step programs or step pay plans. That's all been calculated and figured out into this budget to include anybody who's getting raised, people who are not getting raises. Police Department, do you have any new people like that yeah, too? Yeah, we have, we have newer people on that. They have to step up. It takes five years to get the top pay. We do with that. Okay, that's the only thing I have. Okay, Trustee Neely? Well, the, uh, I was going to ask the Public Works Director. Uh, Trustee Jones was talking about the, uh, the new meters and how they may say they go bad after 12 or 15 years, you know, and uh, so they're not accurate. Uh, but I've always heard that the village of Washington. Speaking of microphone, even. I've always heard that the village of Broadview has been suffering water loss in our water lines, underground leaks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, if we have underground leaks, replacing the meters isn't going to help that it's good that we have the leak detection, yes, but I don't believe that that's finished, so uh, uh, where's our leak detection, uh, what, what percentage are we suffering now as far as leak detection? And we're 30. We're 30. Absolutely. Oh, well, that won't be a savings to residents or the village, you know, just, just through meters. It's good that we're, we're considering well, we the meters. That, I've so always thought man was not that, that's, that's the unknown, Trustee. You, you don't know that. You, 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 that you came to a conclusion, Trustee. Well, I know we, uh, no, no. I know it's unknown. All I have to say is one last thing. I've heard a number of comments. I didn't have a lot of comments, mm -hmm. but I've heard a number of comments, a number of questions uh, that may have been answered, may not have been answered. I'm not quite sure that we're ready tonight to approve this budget. Now, that, that would have to be, you know, based on the consensus of the rest of the board, but there, there seems to be too many questions uh, at the moment. I'm finished. Thank you, Trustee Miller. Um, well, I don't know if it's 
just me or not, but I mean, I went through all the numbers. I understand the math that was applied. And the questions that I have, I mean, maybe they're a little basic, but I don't see a real issue or a big gap in it's a budget, so it's not 100% accurate. We're going to govern ourselves to be as closely to the budget as possible so that we'll have a measurement. The only improvements or questions that I have are related to um, just a few things. So I was looking at the travel expense and some of the traveling that was reflected in the budget, and I was hoping that the finance director and the mayor could probably get together and discuss a way to measure the traveling so that we can ensure that we are actually seeing the benefit from the traveling that is taking place amongst the individuals that use the money. So um, I don't know exactly how to go about doing it. I would have to do a little bit of research, but if a lot of traveling is taking place, educational things, seminars, et cetera, I would like to realize something from it. I'm not exactly sure how to measure it, but I would want to see something tangible in place, perhaps some type of a graph to say that they went here, they gained this information, and we saw something come back from it. It's just a thought, but um, that would be something I would like to see. One question I did have was related to medical exams that was reflected as a line item under building, and I just wasn't sure what that was about. It said medical, it has a line item reflected under the building. So if, they, if somebody come in, they can uh, go get drug screened and they come out of that respective department area. Not was that for a CDO? I'm sorry. They come in as a hire. As they come in as a hire, but we're not hiring for that. It's a small dollar. I know. I was just curious. Two hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other question was also related to building. Can you help me understand why ensuring that the code for buildings and the nine one nine one one center are interdependent? Why do you need both in order to ensure that the code is reflected accurately? You mentioned earlier that you couldn't. Right. Do the, the, uh, there are. Some Okay. And the and the 911 <coughs> project had already been in motion before I got involved. So when I looked at the plans, I said, well, if we change the code, we're going to have to redo all of these plans, which is going to be additional cost to the village. Okay. Maybe I don't understand specifically what it is. Is the code, <coughs> when I think of when you say code, I'm thinking of like ordinances and resolutions and things like that. But the 911 sensor, I'm thinking of an actual floor plan that actually diagrams what it looks like, et cetera. So I don't understand why they're the, related. The, the 911 sensor, uh, the process is the same whether they do any project thereafter. The elderly may have, right now, the village of Broadway has this project. It's the 911 consolidated sensor. We met, we selected a good developer. Where we were, uh, when I got involved, we were looking at a developer and looking at the plans. They have to plan through CAD, which is like etch a sketch or like mm -hmm. they have to create a plan. That plan is on a big sheet of paper mm -hmm. and it has to be compliant with our village codes. Right. Okay. We our current village code, which was in the 2009 <coughs> building code, we should be updating our code realistically every three years because there's changes. When we got audited, we they said that we should be at the 2000 some substantial change to that code. So when I looked at the, the, the plans, the official set of plans that we had using the 2009 building code and what the 2015, it was almost like we were going to have to scrap it and start all over again. Okay. So you don't want to do that because it's not cost effective or efficient. So what we, what my suggestion was, was to let's move forward because that's the code that the village is currently using. So we are compliant with our village code. Let's get this 911 center Based on 2009. Yes. Once we get the 911 Consolidated Center built with uh, Village of Broadway building renovations, then we will look at updating our codes. We're going to update our ordinances, and along with that, our, our fees and things that it all goes hand in hand. But then the 911 Center will be outdated. No. 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 Okay. Then I'll leave it alone and I'll get better understanding later. Yeah. All right. That doesn't mean that. Yeah. Okay, no, no problem. I'll get a better understanding later related to that. Um, oh, and just as it relates to the um, the timing of this meeting, you know, yeah, it was it was said that it was going to be on Monday. When you came in, they said it was going to be today. It impacted me also. Um, so be it. It, I mean, things happen. I guess um, I'm just not 
as angry or frustrated about it. She said it was going to be on Wednesday. It was like, oh, okay, I got to be here on Wednesday now. So it happens. Um, that's it. The other thing, it, we mentioned earlier, selling village-owned property. And I saw the mayor nodding her head because I think something may have been misinterpreted or miscommunicated in some way. So I wanted to ensure that it was spoken in the right way. Selling village-owned property, can we speak to that again? Uh, the mayor is task one of the other uh, goals that we are tasked with is, is selling village-owned property. We're not landlords. By all means, we had this conversation earlier today. But we're not landlords. So our goal is to sell the village-owned property, <coughs> to get it back on the tax roll, and to uh, hopefully have a viable business and purchase that property that can use property tax, sales tax, and anything else. <coughs> we also have abandoned property in the village of Broadview. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the last scavenger sale. There are about six or seven properties that uh, for Broadway that are on that list and the taxes are outrageous. Okay. As, as minimal as $25,000, as high as almost $700,000. So some of those properties are not going to be saved. They're just, just gonna, they're just going to be bought at a tax sale. And we can redeem the taxes. There's a whole process uh, that you have to go through. But what we're doing is what, I, what I'm doing is working with people to secure those properties and get those properties Village acquire those properties and turn around and sell to a viable developer, get them on the tax roll, get a viable business development, and broaden and things of that nature. Because right now, they're empty, and they're not getting anything. That they're makes not sense. They're not paying the taxes, they're not doing anything, and they're dilapidated. Okay. So just let me add, <coughs> add to that um, as we look at the vacant properties, whether the village on it or if it's a privately owned um, property that they cannot maintain it because of the property taxes. We are actually working with the Cook County Land Bank to assist us with acquiring that property so that it's not a cost to us, but it's a legal way that we can go about acquiring that property so that it can be conducive for us to sell. So that's an option that we're looking at. <clears throat> and that's when you probably shot me shake my head. No, that was the component that uh, Commissioner Upshaw left out is that we're working with the Cook County Land Bank to assist us. Right, okay, that. that's what I thought. I wanted to make sure I, mm -hmm. I heard all the information. Madam President, if I will, like um, can I please acknowledge Trustee Abraham, for the record, did arrive at the meeting at 8.15 p.m. Okay, you want to join us? I, I, just, I just wanted to add something to that, uh, to your <coughs> question about village-owned property. Um, not only do we have the village-owned property as it relates to real estate, we have what's determined to be excess village property, surplus mm -hmm. village property. We sell that as well. Okay. Uh, the village-owned properties, the, the good thing about owning a property is you have control of what happens with it. it. You, yeah. you get to create a development plan with whoever the purchaser may be. So his purchase may be contingent upon whatever development we agree upon. And the reason that we do it is because, especially in our commercial corridor, it allows us to control what happens on Roosevelt Road and, and certain things like that. Um, and, and once we buy it, we get it appraised. Uh, we can sell it at 80% of value. You know, that's, that's by statute. You sell it at 80% of value. But the good thing is, is you get to control what goes there. Right, that, you know, I understand, I follow. You get to control what goes there. So that's, that's, that's the biggest uh, thing with that. Uh, long Because you want to be in compliance with whatever your village plan is. Right, you know, right. Whatever, whatever the village layout plan is going to be. Okay, I follow. I'm almost done, guys. And so I just want to call out that one of the things I was concerned with, um, I had asked a bunch of questions before the, the we came up here, but I was looking at the fact that when it came to the streets, sidewalks, and alleys, it wasn't a lot of funds allocated to it that I thought should have been, but that question was actually answered related to the CDBG grant. So the money that's going to be allocated for that, we're putting it on record that that money will be allocated to the streets going forward for this fiscal year. So that is an additional line item that I don't actually see. Um, it's not reflected under street sidewalks or maintenance of some sort. It's reflected as under CDBG grant. Right. But Verena Horn is saying that that money is going to be going towards the streets. And so I'm going to be ensuring that that dollar amount is <laughs> Well, I just want to make sure because I don't, when I looked at the budget, I was saying to myself, I don't see a lot of money then allocated to the streets. So I was glad to hear that. And um, I actually think this budget is, is solid. I mean, I can understand why, you know, people have different ideas of how they want to use the money, but the information that was presented adds up, it's balanced, and it makes sense. And so we can question it, we can have, we have a measurement, and we can hold people accountable, but the numbers do make sense, and it is balanced. 
And so I don't have an issue with it. I mean, I have some questions and I would like to you know, follow up on, but I don't have an issue with the budget at all. Thank you. Trustee Abraham, would you like to? Sorry, I apologize. I have a little stomach flu, so I wanted to make sure I was here for this. Uh, I do want to compliment the, the team that put this together. I thought it was very well done. Um, to the department heads that spoke on their departments and talking about the input, you know, obviously uh, budgets, you know, you, we want to try to make them as favorable as we can, but then again, at the end of the day, there's still a bottom line that we have to meet. So I'm glad everybody's working together and working with the mayor so that we can have a, a, a continue our day-to-day -day operations. And that's all I have to say, Mayor. I thought it was very well done. Thank you. Um, so Director Hicks or Budget Officer um, Hood, would you guys like to entertain some of the questions that came up from Trustee Jones and from Trustee Brown Marino? Yeah, so I'll uh, entertain a couple of questions. First, I'll, uh, uh, Trustee Brown Marino, uh, when you talk about the 911 Center and the capital project, so w we don't have the cost for that project as of now, right? The project hasn't broken ground. We just hired a construction manager uh, to manage the project. And so we we are mirroring the timeline for the project when, when the bonds would actually be uh, issued. Um, so the when the bonds are issued, um, it, it's not like, um, so when the bonds are issued, payments are not due right away, right? So that's why they are not included in this budget. So when the payments, the payments may not even be, they might not even be due in this fiscal year period because depending on the timing of when the, the 911 center actually break ground, then that's when we'll issue the bonds. We're not gonna issue them ahead of time. We're gonna issue them right in lockstep when the project is actually breaking ground and substantial costs are being incurred, which is why uh, uh, we um, only budgeted for the known cost at this point, which was the amount that you saw. You see the revenue coming in, which we anticipate that um, you know before this fiscal year is up, that we would um, uh, issue the bonds to get those proceeds in. Um, so that's part of the question. The other part of the question is when we talk about servicing the debt. So again, the Are debt may not even here? come due within yes. this uh, upcoming fiscal year. And one of the reasons that we showed the contingency for the, uh, uh, what is it, the, uh, the retro payments is that that is uh, funding that is included in this year's budget that will not go forward. So that's, that's, where, that's part of where that money will come from. So you saw there was about $340,000, $50,000 that is allocated for retro payments, and we won't have those going forward, right? But that those funds will be used to service that debt, a portion of it. The other portion of it is that the rollover oh, bond. Wait a minute. I'm not sure I understand. Hold on. He, he no, I, I want to make sure I understand. You're saying that the money that we didn't can spend this year. Can you jot down your question so that we can address it at the end? I need him to get it out right. so that we can so move I, the budget I, I'll, here. I'll right. explain it a different way. So we have retro payments. That's a one-time payment to catch up the, uh, the unions, right? So that's $350,000 that we will pay in this fiscal year, right? So this, year. this fiscal year, okay, we'll issue bonds, right? Those bonds will, will not be, we would not be obligated, right, depending on the timing of those bonds uh, to make the, the debt service for those payments. Because when you issue bonds, you're not going to be, they're not going to come the next day. We schedule out when, we, when we're going to service that debt. So in the next fiscal year, Right? We have $350,000 that, that is available for us to use to service those bonds. Mm -hmm. you, you follow right. what I'm saying? So the math adds up. So in other words, because it's not a recurring expense, it's not an expense that we would have in fiscal year 20 when we have to make the debt service. Exactly. That's what you were saying. Right. So that, so, so, uh, and then, so that, that's a portion of how we, we, we would service those bonds once they, uh, What's, once they're issued. Um, and when you talk about the capital projects, so a part of the capital projects is that when you say, um, we, we at, when we get the, when we get the, the detailed timeline, 
when we get uh, the, the, the detail cost, the detail cost, mm -hmm. a part of that is the uh, equipment that the public works needs. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of, because what we did was we looked at the capital needs of everybody and public works is, was in the most dire. So that's why the, the amount of the bond is the amount that it is because it's to cover the 911 center plus some of the, which is why we took it out of uh, the budget for the, uh, what was the public works. And so that'll be part of the, the detailed cost when, when uh, Director Hood talked about once we, once we know, then we'll have a detailed uh, analysis of what all of those, because you have to do that. When you issue bonds, you have to specify and identify what the proceeds are gonna be used for. And so at that point, that's when we will have the detailed listing of all those uh, items that will be used for the proceeds. And a part of that would be the equipment that's needed in public works. So hopefully I address your question. Um, Ms. Hood, get to the rest of them. Uh, Trustee Jones, you talked about the budget process. So in one of the things that we put forth for the goal was having a, uh, accountability and transparency. So you talked and you alluded to this, like the process is still the same. All the departments put forth everything that they want. So what we did was <coughs> in the draft budget that was presented in the board meeting was just that, was every department, it was a bottoms up budget. So we got a listing, we got the department's budget from every department, we added all of that up, and we presented that to the board to say, this is what all of the departments have asked for. And that is what presented to the board, for, and, and that represented the $1.9 million deficit, okay? So, how do we get from 1.9 to a actual surplus? Our, our balanced budget. So what we did was, and, and so that was the, the first draft budget that was, uh, that was sent before you guys. What we did, we came into uh, all the departments, came uh, and we met and had a, a, another budget meeting because we met, huh? Weekend, on a Saturday morning, 8 a.m. All the departments and we started off with the draft budget and we started off and said we have a 1.9 million dollar deficit the mayor was not letting us leave until we had a balanced budget so what we looked at so we but prior to that the mayor myself and director hood met to see where we could sure up the revenue side of it so that's where you see the difference of about 800,000 and so there was some things that were initially presented that we say, okay, when we come back and had another bite at the apple, we, we figured that there was a difference of about $800,000 in, uh, in, in revenue that we, that we could realize for the, for the year. Um, so then that's when we brought the departments in because uh, we, we, we knew that we couldn't raise revenue any further than what we had. And we said, we need to, now we got $1.1 million. And so that's when we were called in on a Saturday morning to eliminate that deficit of $1.1 million. And so to the credit of all the department heads, that's where that deficit mm -hmm. was erased because all of the departments put forth and said, you know what, I can, you know, I can give up this or I can be more efficient with this or I can delay the timing of when they made expenses um, to be able to eliminate $1.1 million. Um, and one of the reasons that a big chunk of that was looking at the statutory requirement for the pension contribution, right? So there's two, when you look at the pension contribution, there's two numbers. There is the actuarial number that's, this, and the actuary say, this is what you should put forth to, to have a balanced, 100% um, Fund. funded budget uh, in 10, 20 years. That number, was significantly, I'm drained here, significantly higher than what the statutory requirement was. So for the police and fire fund, that, that eliminated about $500,000 of that $1.1 million gap. So when we looked at that, so that cut the deficit down to 600,000. 
And to the department's credit, they came up with 600,000 cuts or that's delayed. Good. Congratulations. So that's how we got to a balanced budget. I, that was I, good. I didn't ask you for my edification. I asked you for everybody else's edification because we, we saw the $1.9 million deficit. Know, right, and so th that that is to to be transparent because we right. want right. we want the village to understand that that there's probably one point nine million dollars in additional expenses that the that truly are needed by the departments that in order that we um, need it though, yeah. mm -hmm. that that to be able to um, optimally yeah to. I thank you for the words. But to be able to, um, we're not even, we, what we want to do is we want to offer to the village and not only just the current residents, but future residents. We have to make Broadview a viable opportunity for, uh, for because there, there's a, there's, what is it, about 7,500 residents? Mm -hmm. So there's certain things that need to happen within all of the functions to be able to say, if we want to make and continue Broadview being a, a vibrant, balanced community, then those are all the things that they said that that, how that needs to happen, right? But they said, in order to operate today, we can give up these things, and so that's that's where we are, and that's how we got to where we are. I got I got one last uh, all other questions. Comments, to yeah. Well, I, the, Tom, Tom or whoever. Um, the only la the only last part of that is is because you guys looked at revenue uh, and you came away hundred thousand dollars. Is there specific revenue streams that you guys identified that that you could actually look at that may you may have under projected and, and reevaluated to get that eight hundred thousand? So what specific revenue streams are we talking about, Tom? I'd love to do the revenue. <laughs> that's exactly, why, expenses, that's that's exactly that why, why I'm asking you. Okay. Um, first thing we looked at was sales tax. I had initially forecasted that to be a slight decrease from prior years based upon things going on is with Target being rebuilt, how long is that gonna, how is that gonna affect um, our bottom line? Remembering that, that that mall generates about a million two in sales tax. Big construction project could put a dent in that. But I changed my mind. Um, <laughs> Target's going to be done by, by May. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I didn't take into consideration is that there is going to be a couple of new businesses in that same TIF district, uh, old TIF old. Uh, district or mall. Yeah. Yes. Plus, what I alluded to earlier, right now, we don't have everything that we would normally wait for to, to shore up these numbers. The state is going to release a fiscal 19 forecast. Now, the state has a department and people that spend lots of money to come up with the estimates, and they are pretty close on what what the sales tax is going to increase for the state, what the um, income tax will increase for the state, and that filters down to us. So using the numbers from the state's forecasting department helps us get this. We don't have, our, have that ability yet. So what I ended up doing is I ended up thinking, if we do three and a half million dollars, CPI, when our property taxes went up was 2.1%. I took 2.1% times times our three and a half million to get the, the three million five seventy three five hundred. That increased our our revenue by one hundred and seventy three thousand five hundred from my earlier estimate. Now, if I did this today, yesterday, Yahoo Finance announced that uh, there's been this tremendous increase in sales tax uh, or in sales tax to municipalities because of the um, income tax cut to, to all people. People are running out and spending money. Where January and February were negative year to year, March was up 4.9%. They're talking about a sales tax nationwide anywhere from 4.9 to 6% increase this year. How that will translate to Broadview, I don't know, but I'm more comfortable with my 3,573,500 number now than I was even on Saturday. Okay. Um, utility tax, 
I knocked it by 100,000. Why? Well, when I did this, we didn't have March. March, we got a $130,000 payment and knocked everything, and knocked the averages up. So things are, are changing. Um, so I went and um, used the past years and looked at those months, and it, sure enough, it's always March and April are bigger numbers than the rest of the year. So where it was getting 40 to 50,000, all of a sudden, boom, over 100. So that's why I knocked that one off. Um, same goes with the utility tax. Other governmental is actually two grants that I found out about this weekend. So that's, you know, I, it, and just difference in style between mayors. <laughs> never, never tell anybody anything until the check's in your hand. Mm -hmm. Let people know when something's coming. That's, that's, that's the, the, the difference between mayors there. So that's actually putting in money that we, we should be getting through intergovernmental grants. <laughs> Traffic fines. Traffic fines I originally put in at 176,000. Um, actually, it's controllable, but you know, if we, if we want, we can get as much more. But the, the chief initially thought 200,000 was a good target, but then it occurred to us, you said 30,000 dollars? How much you remember what? The, the difference is what we're getting for collections. Yeah. So we increase that because not only are we going to get the traffic fines, we're getting the collections off of the past traffic fines that have been sitting out there for years. Um, the next one, federal grants, there's still $70,000 in the cost grants. So we got two officers that at least three quarters we will get reimbursed for. So I was thinking that that was expired. They're it's still carrying over. Um, sell a village property. This is Dave. We're, we're selling something <laughs> um, that I didn't know about until recently. And the last one under miscellaneous. Um, last year, we had um, discussions about some of the village-owned property, which we pay taxes on. And lo and behold, we've discovered we can get our taxes back. And that's what this is going to be. So, so, so there is, is a, a way for us to recoup three years of our, our, our taxes and, and get them back. So we're going to move forward on that. Yes? Mr. Hood, you didn't address the uh, ambulance billings? Ambulance billings as of today are 946000 I did see that. Yes, I did see that. It's I, see, I saw where the, the, the error is here. That that is good. That for tracking reasons, the fire chief had asked us to create multiple accounts. So instead of just being 4061 to 4068, there's a point one, point two, point three, point four, which correlate to Loyola Hines. Mad. Separate them all out. You can separate them all out. Yeah. Fire, Loyola, EMS. Heinz Fire, that makes sense. EMS. Yeah. 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 Yeah the combined ambulance fire uh, revenues. So we're 150,000 for this budget. It's a very reasonable thing to get. So the that's, I, I still, I can understand where you may have it split out into different line items mm -hmm. internally, but if we're looking at the, I'm still looking at this where we're showing the 475, nine I think it is, that we're budgeting mm -hmm. as we have in the past, but we're only showing $10,000 in revenue. And that's so that's is the, is, but it's, where is the receipt? It's not picking up the, it's not picking it up. So it's not picking up additional received revenue. There is money, if, if I go and, and pull the system generated report that has every account on there, Slides. it will pick up all of the point that where it says X, yeah. there'll be more. And this, this number, 
as of March 31st is, is over $900,000. And let, let me just tell you how I, how, I, how I got these unaudited numbers. The, the, can you guys see the report, the budget to actual reports? The system no. automatically- No, we don't. The, it was the, the system automatically gives an estimate of what it'll think. <laughs> That's why I kind of like to wait until we have actual numbers. It, it, it's, it's making estimates that, that are showing the mayor making more than she actually made because it's going back and, and projecting it somehow. Um, so the unaudited, th those numbers are going to change. The, the tip, when they're actual, they will be different. Because right. it's the budget. Um, other questions? I just have one quick question okay. for either you or Mr. Hicks. Under capital funds, um, capital projects funds. There's a line item for purchase of equipment for five hundred and fifty thousand. I was wondering. I, I wanted to better understand the rationale as to placing it there versus under the department that will be utilizing the equipment as a depreciating asset. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, uh, the purposes, like I uh, indicated earlier, is that um, when we when we. Uh, thought about the, the total issuance of the bonds, we wanted to ensure that we got the capital needs of, of the major capital needs of, of the departments that were in dire straits. And so with uh, Public Works being in that situation, we felt like it would be best to, because that's gonna be a long-term e piece of equipment that is going to be, once we get one, you know, we can, okay. We can cover that with the bond proceeds. That's in capital right. funds. That's okay, a capital project. And so that's what, when we talk about going forward, is that we, we will look to establish a five year capital plan that will access the capital needs of all the departments. And so going forward and in the next budgets, there shouldn't be capital purchases within each budget, it should be in the capital plan. And so that's what those funds should that makes be. Sense. Because okay. we would be looking at the most. Uh, dire needs in the and thinking about um, and, and then giving priority to uh, like the ambulance that would generate revenue. So we would go through that process. So that's that makes sense. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Hicks. If you were covering expenses and he was covering revenue, uh, the expense that you didn't address is the streets project. Now, when Trustee Horn was talking about the CDBG, the money that's in that fund. The street project that we approved for Hancock to work on is not the CDBG project. This is our spring, uh, our the regular, the, the regular year's street project that, that is not reflected anywhere in here. I'm going to bounce back to your question after answering your questions. Yes, step increases are in there. What we did to calculate the the, um, retro. the, the, the pay and the retro was we looked at step increases and each one of those unions has a different thing. Mm -hmm. So some of them are 2.25, some are 2.0, some are 1.5 one year two. We used the actual last um, proposed rate increase that's going to arbitration. So we plugged those in to come up with those numbers and calculate their retro. So the baseline is what's going to arbitration. Baseline, yes. what you right. use is what yes. the local arbitration. Yes, okay. it does. Yep. Arbitration could say give it all to them. They could, oh, it you know, they could end up anywhere. Right. Yeah. It's one of those factors that is big and unknown, mm -hmm. which leads us to the street project. Right. Right. It's not the bonds that I'm thinking about funding that from. It's the MFT funds. MFT funds. Right. But I thought you said the MFT were, were saving for the broader part project. Of the MFT. You said part of it. Part of the MFT. That we have to make up the 600000 from the two streets last year out of the MFT and water. But MFT has... 1.2, 1.3. Yeah, well, it's 1.3. The, the, I'll check. It's more than 1.3 because I think 1.3, was that the starting balance? Do you remember? Yeah, I think that was the starting balance. It's more. Okay. So... Well, I know it was 1.3 in there. But we, right. we don't want to commit to spending this money. So somewhere, something's going to have to give. We have a million needs. Streets, payroll, where are we going to stop? When we, some of this stuff is more set, we know where we're going to spend the money, 
we can, can, can actually say we have to reserve X amount of MFT funds for Braga, then that rest of that money is available. And that's what I'm saying. This is a budget today with a lot of unknowns. If we were doing this six, eight weeks from now, a lot of these would be answered. But because we're doing it now, we're going to have to come back and make adjustments to this budget, mm -hmm. which might be a street program. There's other, there's other the things out there, there that could be added. Mm -hmm. At so this point, though, we're being very conservative, and we don't this want to, we don't want to just spend on everything and then something bad happen, and then we'll be right. sinking like the Titanic. Exactly. Well, and then the, the, the one thing I want to clarify, though, is that the majority of your spend and what you, in the majority of what you levy, and all of what you levy for is the, the general fund. So everything else is just based on a priority. So general fund, that's nailed down, right? Because that's, that's we know, we levied for that. We're gonna collect those. We levied last year. And so, uh, what is it, 55% of last year, 45% of this year. So the, the corporate fund, the general fund, is nailed down, because we, uh, Eighty percent of the cost is personnel, mm -hmm. right? Unless we're gonna, we're, we're not gonna make any 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 department heads gonna make any drastic personnel changes. Mm -hmm. That's eighty percent. Everything else is based on the strategic uh, priorities of the uh, of the village, and, and 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 making sure that whatever projects we line those up, and whichever one takes priority. But what we're asking you guys. And why, you know, Tom talked about the uncertainty. The uncertainty is with the priorities of the different capital projects that will come. Because what we know today, even six weeks from now, when we could nail this down uh, based on past of what they've done, we could have a water main that, that switches everything. We could have some other issues that would take precedence over what we say from, you know, whenever Hancock, you know, put out what they wanted to do in, term, in terms of the streets. But what, we, what you look at and why we always report out on is the corporate fund because that is your taxes, that is how we operate the village, right? right? Everything else is what we place strategic priority on based on what is happening within the village. So you know, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that, okay? Yeah, that makes sense. So, can I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Uh, well, are we finished with yes. questions? I got one, one, one last question on okay. this. This is this this budget, right? This is the budget that we're talking about. This one right here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the tentative okay. budget. Right, well, look, I'm, I'm gonna go directly to the budget. So you, you got a copy of it, Tom? You got a copy of the budget? Yeah. On page 11. Which one are we talking about? Talking about this. One. The handout. It's only one. It's only one budget. Yeah, so, uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is the one we're voting. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. So on page 11, uh, under summary revenue by category, uh, under 2019, okay, licenses, permits, and fees. You see that number 617, 177? Mm -hmm. Charges for services, 1288900. That's on page 11. Yep. Why does it change on page 12? Those same numbers, uh, those same lines turn into 555-177-1350. Summary of revenue by category on one page is different from summary of revenue by category where you, where you include the trend. And the totals are the same. And the totals are the same. Well, but but we're, this is what we're, we're going to vote on, so it's got to be corrected. That's why I'm, that's why I asked specifically what budget are we we going to be voting on, and is this the one we're going to be looking at?
I, I do appreciate the time you take and the work you do in trying to explain things. I come to the meetings to try to understand what's going on and what's being spent and wanting to, so that, you know, I try to encourage people to come out and see what's happening and say, go check it out. But I'm going to tell you, it is confusing as all get out. <laughs> when you come, now listen, I come to the village and I'm looking at whatever your proposed draft budget that's a million and $1.9 million, it's not really your budget, but yet we have 10 days to look at it when you are going to be presenting the budget that you want to do for this village tonight or tomorrow. So how can we don't get a copy of what you're really going to do so we can have some input or look at it as opposed to what you're drafting? I don't follow that. Is that the law or is it just us? I'm asking. I'm just asking. Is it is it the law or is it us? And that's all I'm asking because it would make it a lot more sense to you know to hear this and then see the budget and say, hey, that's great. Ms. Redmond, let me let me share this with you. Uh, I think that for for in this particular case, it's a matter of style and the fact that we've got a, a crunch to try to get it done by the end of this month. I think that's what happened. And when I say matter of style, uh, Tom alluded to it in his presentation about one individual waits till you got the check in the hand, the other one tells you what's coming. And, and to the mayor's credit, like I said early on tonight, to the mayor's credit, she basically exposed how the process goes, which is why I had the guy come and explain it in the public arena, exactly what happens when we go through our budgeting process. What you saw is exactly what we always see every year, every year. It just doesn't get published. We just don't always publish it. So this year, it happened. So you got to see how and how we trim it down. Behind the scenes, how we trim it no, down. No, no, no. I, I, I do appreciate that. Yeah. But I'm saying, as a resident who's at every meeting I can be to, yeah. I mean, I'm like, my goodness. <laughs> How much more confused can I be? And well, can I imagine what these folks have listened but you, to. But you've, got, but you've got it now. I do okay, understand. You, you got I it do now. appreciate it. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to tell you, I am appreciative to hear and see the goals that are presented for this village and for the department and having each department person say what's important for the village. I do want to add one more goal up there. Huh. I want you to think about it, a suggestion. I have been a proponent of, of the uh, food pantry for eight years. I'm not just there handing out food, waving. Yeah, I'm doing money. the grunt work, yeah. donate money, doing whatever. And I just want to say this. A lot of times I don't speak about it, and it's not my choice. I'm not the director, and I won't go there. But I want you to know that is a viable thing for this community. And I am working behind the scenes to see if I can get this director to move in the direction that if they don't want to do it any longer. See if we can get people that would do it and transition. And we're going to need your help. Westchester is wonderful, but Broadview is where it's at. This is where I put eight years of service, not just talking, but money behind it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Radley. Wait on them to give us the. If this, if this is the budget that we're going to be voting on, there's a couple things that are Hold missing. Trustee, uh, Robert, Director Hicks. So the number is the 55117. So if you add the total, um, they, they both add up to the same amount. So the difference would be within those two items. So it's a 55. It's just a, it's a typo. Yeah, but the, the point is, is we need to have it corrected for purposes of being yeah, able to I, I'm, Can you correct it tonight? So we need to know what the correction is, you know, for the clerk to have it recorded properly and for the trustees to have it. Tonight. You know, yeah, it can be corrected tonight, you know. So we will, we'll, we'll, you know, when we adjourn and we get to, to actually do it, yeah. Uh, is, is, is that it? Uh, and, and they can explain that to me. You got one? Well, motion to adjourn. Um, there are some things that are missing from this version of the budget. First of all, any of the inter none of the interfund transfers are in here. But aside from that, the $375 to buy the Edmark property, there's nothing in here about the transfer from uh, Roosevelt to the 17th Avenue TIF. There's nothing in the 17th Avenue TIF about Trustee Brown Marino, I have to cut you off only because that's not true what you're telling the public. We no. have already no. had that discussion. So uh, it budget. was in this budget. It's not in this budget. And this is the one you said that the board's going to be voting on. 
I, I think maybe finance can, can address oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the presentation, but, but, but I'm sure the finance can address it. No, it's not, you know what? It's, it's not being made up as you go along. It is reflected. Yes, it is. It's reflected within the budget. Yes, and you probably well, just need to be no. educated about how you look well, at the numbers no. and let the categories. Let, let, but it, it is there. Let finance explain that. It's there. I'll uh, make a motion to it adjourn. Is, no, the $375 to buy the Edmark building is not in this budget. That one, yeah, okay. adjourn, adjourn. It's in the one that Tom Hood sent us. It's not the, in here. Uh, budget meeting. None of the interfund that transfer. That's second. what I'm talking about. Kevin, Madam President, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay, it's been properly motioned by Trustee Jones to adjourn the, the, budget, the budget hearing, hearing meeting. meeting. Seconded by Trustee Horn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Hearing no opposition, this meeting is adjourned. All right. At this time, it is uh, 10.31. We're going to uh, call to order the special meeting. Vice President, would you like to do that? We're going to wait for them. Let's take a minute. Let's, matter of fact, let's take a break. Yeah.
Okay, let the record reflect it is now 10.40 p.m. We are still at Village Hall, 2350 South 25th Avenue. Madam President, we're about to start the special board meeting. Would you like a roll call? Yes, please. Trustee Ely. Present. Trustee Tierney. Present. Trustee Jones. Aye. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Trustee Horn. Here. Trustee Abraham. Here. Trustee Brown Marino. Here. Um, we're going to forego standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Moment of silence. We go straight to public comment. Okay. You want to forego? Okay. Uh, public comment. Uh, we, we have, have none, Mayor. So we'll move to item three. Motion to approve the proposed annual budget for fiscal year 2018 slash 2019. Motion to approve. Second. It's been properly motioned by Trustee Jones, seconded by Trustee Tierney to approve the proposed budget. Madam President. Trustee Ely. Well, it's, uh, at the conclusion of the last meeting, there were a couple of questions. Did, did we identify this five way to enter fund transfer to pay for that mark building is in, in this particular budget? Um, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Okay. Um, so, so you are correct, Elect, elected officials will not have any changes during their term in office. And the, the, the one trustee should have remained at the old rate. So I would suggest that we reduce our um, line for trustees, which is 0121-5104 by the $1,200. Uh, a second correction. No, that'll, that'll, that won't break the thing, will it? <laughs> <laughs> There is a, it, what uh, Mr. Jones pointed out, there is a, a typo, it's put in incorrectly, in that there needs to be, even though the ending number is correct, there needs to be a uh, correction in that revenue total uh, for licenses. And what we've discovered is it's more of a formatting issue for the TIF, it's off the page. So I'm going to, I guess we should, I, I'll say we need to add the transfer of three, the 375,000 from Roosevelt to 17th Avenue North TIF, and also include the purchase of the property in the 17th Avenue North TIF. Okay. But just so that you know, it's just off the page. Well, well ma'am, ma'am, uh, John's got the floor, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, this, uh, uh, I just heard comments and questions prior to the end of the last meeting and I'm thinking that it should be there. So from Roosevelt Road to 17 Avenue North. Right. Okay. So with those follow, following corrections, I would recommend passing this budget. Anything That's else, Trustee? To you tonight. That's it. Trustee Tierney? I have nothing. Trustee Jones? No, I was just gonna ask him to go through the changes individually and go to the page numbers. Oh. So, so that we can accurately get it reflected and the clerk record. can get a cor correct record. Yeah. And also, there will need to be a uh, motion uh, made on the document. And we're going to have to. Uh, procedurally. Let's, okay. Yes. Let's get it recorded first. Yeah, we'll get it recorded uh, yeah. so we're going to have to go to that procedure also. So, so, Tom, what I'm asking you to do is let's, let's go one by one, make okay. sure that, that the clerk gets it recorded correctly so that we can get the budget amended correctly or corrected. And then we'll, we'll make another motion. Yeah. All right. The first one is on page 15 under personal services, account number 5104. We need to decrease it by 1,200. Decrease to 26. Yeah, page 15. 5104 yes. decreased by 1,200. Right. Got it. Also on page 11 mm -hmm. in the revenue categories, licensing permits and fees needs to be decreased by 62,000. And that's under 2019, right? 
2019. 2019, okay. Mm -hmm. Also Sorry. under 2019, charges for services needs to be increased by 62,000. Got it. Are those the figures on the next page? And that That's should correct. match the figures yep. on the next page. Yes. Yeah. transfers it will the last four digits of the account number 4086 we will be transferring three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars out I'm sorry I don't see We're that much yeah, uh, yeah. expenditures on the what commodities capital outlay um you don't have 486 listed yeah, we, yeah. We, 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 well, 486 is not up here not on page 36 not on page 36 It's not listed on what we're seeing. So, so you want to write in 408? We're going to have to add to it. 408. Yes, where, it's four to what? where are we going to add it, Tom? We're going to add it. Revenues? Um, yes, operating transfer, it's going to be, uh, we'll, we'll put it in revenues, but it's going to be a transfer out. So it's a negative number. It's a negative number. Operating what? Revenues. Okay. No, operating transfer. Oper oh, I'm sorry, operating transfer. Transfer. Right. transfer. And what are we doing with that fund? Um, that's it with that, with that. What are we doing to it? How much are we putting in around? You're, you're thinking about 375,000. 375. Got it. And just, we, it's an operating transfer. Um, we could even put it below. Just, just we need to make sure we have the account number and record that show that. 386. Okay. And the... John just told me, and I forgot, was it 39? 39. I'm assuming this is 4086 also. Yep, and it's going to be an operating transfer, except it's going to be the 375000 coming into, coming in. into the account. Got it. And under expense. I just happen to know that this is going to be 17-85-5401. It's going to be the purchase of the building, and that will be a negative 375. That does not exist. We're going to have to add that. Where you what, what's, what's the number, Tom? 17 what? 17-85-5401. That's going to be under uh, expenditures on the bottom half of the same page. Right. We're going to we're going to get the three hundred seventy five up in the revenues and and spend. And you're going to spend it down the here. Expenditures. And, and what is purchase of Edmark? Purchase of Edmark. It's the purchase of Edmark. What, what is uh, the GL fifty four hundred one called? Buildings. Oh. It's right. Right now, it currently only exists under forty, but because this is a tip, we have to keep it separated. We have to. Yeah. that all over time? That is all. Okay, that's all, I, that's all I got. Trustee Abraham? Yeah. Yeah, no questions. Trustee Abraham? I don't have anything. Um, Trustee Brown Marino? Um, yeah, there was one other thing that I had mentioned before that we hadn't addressed, and that is the professional services and the executive fund. The 35000 that we have here is not enough to cover the lobbyists, let alone any other professional services. Uh, again, what Mr. Hicks had before was 69000 I don't know what the difference between the 48000 for Mr. Ronan and the sixty-nine represented, but I want to make sure that we have a proper amount in that line item. Yeah, put that line item. 
Director Hicks? Director Hicks? Yes. For yeah. the professional services for the lobbyists, so that was reduced to 35000 and then we have legal and professional services. Can you explain to Trustee Brown Marino where the lobbyist line item is going to come out of? It's going to come out of contractual services since we have a contract with this individual? Right. right. And under contractual services and executive for professional services, there's only 35000 in there now. In contractual services, there's 5201. 5201. 5202, where it says legal professional services. 5202. Yeah. I think it's in the 5202. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's in 5202. So the lobbyist is in 5202. Yes. Okay. Thirty-five thousand. And we. And I just wanted to say because as I looked over my notes. Um, when I looked at the uh, group uh, uh, invoice, Mr. Ames is right. I didn't notice on the side that that was for two months. It looked as I was looking at the description that it was one for each. So I apologize. It is twelve twenty-five a month. That, that's we. Yeah. No, we, I, we, 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 I, I didn't get to mention it during the budget hearing. I want to make sure that I say. You know, no, I, we're just I glad that we got the, the to provide you with the supporting documentation to make sure that you have the correct information yeah. and the correct interpretation. Thank you. Uh, can we get a roll call vote, please? Oh, 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 oh he got something else. Oh, oh, oh. He didn't ask him a question yet. Who was Which question? The forty-eight thousand. I didn't hear it. Oh, it says under fifty-two hundred two. It's in fifty-two hundred two. Oh, follow the oh. legal. Under legal and legal professional. Legal and professional services. services. And, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, what about the other interfund transfers to and from the general fund that is normally part of the budget and was part of the two previous budgets, but it's not in this one? Yeah. There's nothing Th in this That'll one. be added to all of the funds. It's just a formatting issue. And so what we'll do is we'll put that in for all of the funds. As you saw in the presentation, that's what will be presented um, because it's the same numbers. It's just uh, to make it fit on the page and to be readable. Uh, but it's the same presentation. It's the same numbers that were presented. Uh, it's the same numbers that were presented in the tentative budget document that uh, Director Hood uh, is just uh, in this actual document. Um, it, it's, it's just cut off. So we will add that to make sure that those that is re that is reflected. So, would it be fair to say that we would take this part and it would be incorporated into this? Yes. Which was shown in the PowerPoint presentation for every fund. Right. No, I then, understand it's yeah. been shown in other places. It's just not part of what we're vote, what the board is expecting no. to vote. So, on. you you um, so part of what so you're voting for is the tentative budget that that Director Hood presented that has the total detail. The, what I presented is a budget document to try to provide some education, um, uh, some. Uh, to be a more useful document than just pure numbers. So in that, uh, in my error, I did not include anything below uh, the, rev the, the the bottom line number, which is the operating transfers, which get you down to your change in fund balance and your actual ending fund balance, Matt, Matt, which will be added. Go ahead. Matt, let, me, let, me, let me try to help them out, OK? What, what we need is to get those correct transfers read right into the record. For, so that we can have it on the, on the record for our budget. Mm -hmm. And then what I'll ask you guys to do is to make all the, make, make all the corrections and make sure that we, all of us get the copies of the corrections that are gonna be reflected in what you can ready to tell the clerk right now so that it can be right. read into the record, right. put on the record, and we'll have it all legalized. Right. Everything will be legal. Go uh, ahead, Mr. So, Tarnie. Uh, which one of you guys got it? You got it, Tom? Well, just, just formalize it. So all the changes that were made we presumably put into a motion to amend it. That's what I'll be ready to do. Yeah. We'll be retyped out and reformed. Exactly. Yep. Mr. So, will in turn read back into the record for the application for the right. process of the last minute. One other thing, Mr. Hicks and Mr. Hood, Mr. Hood being the budget officer, gave a two and a half hour presentation to give as much information as I've ever seen in a municipal hearing about a budget process. <laughs> that is not the budget document. The budget document is, is this. Is the document before the board. Right. Not that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Not that one. Not, no. Right. I think it's the same. It's a presentation. It's, 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 it's different format. You, you got a presentation up here, and then you got right. the budget. Please, Tom. Um, the, the transfer. And I just wanted to clarify with these changes. This was. It's not changing the overall it's numbers. Yeah. It's just. It's the same numbers. Right. It's the format. Okay. It's so this, this is the presentation. Other than operating. Well, that's what you um, have to put. Activities. We were going to be transferring some funds in and out of the general fund. We will have proceeds from a debt issuance of 200, I'm sorry, no, that's right, $272,425. We will be transferring from the general fund to the debt service fund 28176 We will be transferring from the general fund to the CDBG fund $145,623. We are going to be transferring to the uh, capital improvement fund from the general fund $272 or $272,425. And we are also going to be transferring from the general fund to the IMRF fund $2,028,000. So two hundred twenty-eight thousand and eighty-two dollars. That's a total transfers of four hundred one eight eight one four hundred one thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars. Thanks, Tom. So, okay. is that that all of them? That's all. That's all of them. Uh, so I, I'd like to amend my motion to approve the budget with the corrections that were read into. Uh, this is my motion. Yes, it was <laughs> I'd like to amend my motion to uh, reflect the changes that were just read into the uh, system, including the, the earlier changes, um, Madam President. Second. Okay, it's been properly motioned, or I should, I should say amended by Trustee Jones, seconded by Trustee Horn to reflect the changes read into the record by Budget Officer Thomas Hood. Trustee Ely? Yes. Trustee Tierney? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee yes. Horn? Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Brown Marino? No. And that motion carries oh. five to one. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Then probably <laughs> motion by Trustee Horn, uh, seconded by Trustee I'm Jones sorry. to adjourn. Yeah, yeah I said. Oh, we need to uh, actually okay. take the vote now. All right. You're motion right. to approve the Sorry. budget. Oh, Second. Oh. Motion to approve the amended budget. Second. Who was the seconded by? Tierney. So it's been properly motioned by Trustee Jones, seconded by Tierney to approve the amended budget. budget. Trustee. Um, Madam President, would you like a vote? Trustee Ely. Yes. Trustee Tierney. Yes. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee yes. Horn. Trustee Abraham. Yes. Trustee Brown Marino. No. And that motion carries five to one. Yeah, now we're entertaining the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Yes. Second. And properly motion by Jones, seconded by Tierney to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Hearing no opposition and plenty of uh, affirmation from the audience as well. We're going to adjourn at 11 p.m. <laughs>